such a vibe, such a chill day, and by a chill day, uh, I guess it's been overcast for me, so. Anyway, through to one! Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. It is the BNR stream today on this fine 11th of November 2024. I hope you're having a wonderful week. We'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, always I get to say, oh my week's been busy. So we're still, <laughs> we're still going ahead with that. But honestly, it's like, well, we're at 11-11. And when you think about it, like how many more weeks are there left in the year? We got this, we got two more Mondays of November, and then it's the... 2nd, 9th, 16th, 23rd, you're two days away from Christmas. This is the 7th last stream before Christmas. It's 6th last maybe, I don't know if I'd be doing the 23rd. Anyways, uh, with that, how about let's just dive right into the game. Let's see if I've got this real smooth, the transition. Easy, easy money, easy money. Uh, but yeah, no, welcome to the stream. Uh, we're playing Metro Prime 2, uh... Yet again, a bit more, a bit more Metroid Prime 2. Uh, in the first stream, uh, which was last week, uh, we did basically everything from the beginning of the game up until the, including the boost ball. So we got the boost ball all in one go. Uh, and we're going to continue on. I'm hoping we get a solid amount of progress. Um, uh, yeah, no, we'll see. We'll see. Solid amount of progress. That's the dream. That's the goal. That's the vibe. Uh, but yeah, no, no, yeah, Metro Prime 2, it's, it was a good fun stream last, last week. Lots of fun stuff going on. Um, but yeah, no, we started off, we got the, the missiles, and then we got the, the morph ball bomb, and the space jump boots, and the dark beam, and the light beam, and the dark suit, and then the super missile, and we finally ended with the boost ball. Lots of stuff all in one go, so we're gonna just continue on the vibe. Uh, my hard mode run is still going onwards, but, uh, my first save is done. It's basically done, so... Uh, but yeah, we sort of stopped right at the point when, uh, we'd have to do a fair bit of backtracking, we'll say. Um, and yeah, it's just awkwardly a, a bit of backtracking right, right here. There's two parts of the game that are gonna sort of have this backtracking feeling, uh, and this is definitely the first one. Uh, but yeah, no, we came straight out of the, uh, the boss room here, and I just hit the save point, so... We're going to start off with the, the trudge back. Trudge? Trudge? I think it's trudge. Um, yeah. Also, I've used a lot of uh, light ammo, apparently, so it'll be good to get some more later on. Um, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Chill times. Chill chill week. Um, well, actually, no. It's not a chill week. There's been a lot of chaotic stuff, and not even just, like, in my space of... You know, things I, I do, things I, like, pay attention to, it's like, no, like, it is quite a lot of stuff. I feel like this is probably a, um, gonna be a very relatively quiet stream, but we'll see. We'll see if people show up. Um, because it's, uh, it's Remembrance Day. Did you remember Remembrance Day? I always, uh, occasionally forget. It's very weird in Australia. Um, well, not, like, weird weird, but just, like... Uh, one level weird. Also, with the boost ball, you can notice, uh, well, you can, you could have seen half pipes ages ago, but now they contextually make sense. Who put them here, though? We'll never know. We'll never really know. Um, but yeah, we've got, Remembrance Day is like a worldwide holiday. Oh, there you go. Uh, it's a worldwide holiday. People around the world will, you know, commemorate the fallen soldiers and those who fought in wars. Uh, but we also in Australia have a have a holiday called Anzac Day on April 25th, and that's in a celebration or I guess remembrance rather than a celebration of uh, the Gallipoli landing in World War One, which is probably the uh, um, you know sort of the the nastiest kind of outcome of a Australian war effort uh, in our history. I feel um, so. It's certainly you know like we definitely commemorate the soldiers then, and then we get to. Remembrance Day, and we're like, well, we're, we're gonna do that again. So, we commemorate them again. Um, but definitely, I, like, for me... Oh, I tried twice. Uh, this spinner will just open up back at this room, uh, but it's nice because then you can, uh, you know, hop back in. I don't know how easy it is to get back in, but it's nice, at least. You can be in this room and be like, oh, you know, actually, I want to go to the tour of this grove. And you can. But it also means that we get a nice little getaway. We don't have to go through the central room or anything. Um, 
I don't think we've gone into this room. It's just a dude. There's nothing really here. This is virtually all of this game is big room, little room, big room, little room. There is no fanciness. There's no variety going on there. So, um, but yeah, that being said, I hope everyone had a good day today. Also, 11.11 is a very curious day for game releases. Uh, it was famously the release date for Minecraft, and then Minecraft decided to release a week later, thinking that there'd be an even bigger game coming out on that day, which was Skyrim. Uh, and then all the millennials will go, actually, it's the release date of Halo 2, which is now 20 years old. Happy birthday, everyone. Isn't that fun as well? Halo 2 came out the same year as this game, and, um, like, they're very different games but they involve a first person space shooty kind of experience. I haven't played Halo 2. Someone's gonna yell at me quite a bunch for not having played Halo 2, but I'll get there, I'll get there. I bought the Master Chief Collection ages ago and I feel really bad because I'm just like, I only played the first Halo and I was like, yeah, it's okay, it's all right. The multiplayer is probably pretty smooth. Actually, it's not even probably, it is because I've played a fair bit of it. Um, and even, I've done LAN parties at the time when, uh, you know, I'd, I'd actually play Halo at the, um, at least roughly when I was young, so. Uh, check around here, you'll find a little hidey hole that we can dive down. And in this little hidey hole we have the first lore of the day. But don't worry, already we're 55% through, so. Amidst this turmoil, we discovered many disturbing anomalies. Uh, <laughs> spatial disturbances appeared across the land. Objects went into a state of dimensional flux. The atoms divided between ether and somewhere else. There was little time to ponder these strange happenings, for we had to deal with the devastation of our lands. Uh, we've also got a little little thing here. It's only visible on this side, but you, you know you could always just reach around and grab it. But you might as well just come back for it. The reason why we can't go back is, or at least until now, or <laughs> one item before that was, uh, yeah, you needed the super missile, which is there on both sides. But usually, uh, when a door requires a lock. Uh, like a one-time lock, so super missile, missile, uh, eventual next item, uh, well, not next item, but we'll get it in the stream. Um, they're all blocked by uh, a one-way kind of door, so, or rather, it, the lock ha happens on both sides. I don't know what I'm talking about, but, uh, but yeah, that's all good. Now, okay, when you go through this little hidey hole over here, uh, be a little careful because it's going to output you around this corner and then another corner and then you're going to be in this perspective and you want to make sure you're, you can boost here. The whole point is that this is double checking that you've got the boost ball. You don't have to worry from here on out. But uh, yeah, go through a little hole, through a little corridor. Look at that wonderful purple door down there. And uh, we exit out into another room. This room is actually the Hall of Honor Dead. Very uh, apt timing for this. Um, although for some reason the map seems to make note of this room directly above you as if that's not the temple that we keep going into. Um, I was just like, that's fun. And there's sand bats in case you want sand bats. Uh, but yeah, there's nothing actually too critical here. You'll even, well, I mean, there is an item in the middle which you can clearly see. Um, but yeah, this place is so like out of the way. Uh, the key thing of note is that you'll be able to rotate two rings at a time. The rings are always connecting, uh, but since that means that there's four spinners, that means there's five rings. You want to make sure you spin something such that the outermost ring, or the innermost ring, is lit up. We'll get to this point. Well, actually, if you do those two first, then you'll definitely guarantee you've spun at least, you know, one of the ones that is only affected by one of the spinners. It's not too tricky of a puzzle, but it's just, it's a puzzle nonetheless. Once it's all lined up and lit up, this whole thing raises up, revealing... Light! Oh my gosh, jeez. Uh, I love the, the lore on the structure, it's like, yep, it's uh, part of a security system and it's been on and it shatters the glass because that's what it's made for. Pick up this item and we shall... Wave our hand, just like any other missile or beam, including the first game. A bit of a funky animation, this is actually a very brand new item. This is the Seeker Launcher. The Seeker Launcher, um, is a bit contextual, you're gonna find that. Also, I love how there's a portal here, um, 
I just want to add, this portal is always on. You'll notice that's the on state. The lore even says, it's like, yeah, it's online, but don't want to go in there. It's dangerous. Uh, that's sort of the game telling the people who somehow glitched their way up there why Samus is never going to go in there. Uh, we will mental note that next stream, but just just mental note. So anyways, the door I'll put you here. So if you got stuck here, well, here you go. Uh, the sand bats will keep spawning because in case you lose your missiles, you're going to miss that. But yeah, you hold down the, the missile button after shooting a dummy missile. And then uh, you can shoot up to five missiles by locking onto things. This will come up sometimes. Sometimes. It's a bit weird. Uh, oh, hi there, Mr. Man. I keep thinking I need to scan lots of things, but actually, since we're going to do a bit of, a little bit of backtracking, more backtracking as well. Um, but yeah, there's a guy chilling up here, by the way. Mmm, the his testament. That last hit breached my armor. The poison spreads. Though I have found the key, it is too late for me. Soon my light will fail. They know I am here. They will come to this site to plunder the key. My last stand shall be at the edge of the temple grounds. I only hope I have the strength to fight when they arrive. Hmm, another testament. Hmm. Also, the ship's here. It's still broken. But you can hop in. It's been a while since we've actually... I don't think we've had the opportunity to visit the ship since. Uh, so now's a great time to come back to it and just say hi. Um, with the light beam as well, or the... Yeah, yeah, with the light beam, you'll actually notice that you can shoot this one thing as well. Uh, there's nothing chilling behind it, but it does allow you to awkwardly get pushed back while it's moving, and then eventually use it as a ledge to hop back up. And there is a walkway to, leak, to go back to... Um, the Torvus bog if you need to but why go back there because you know what we can do we can arbitrarily just go exactly also uh there's two translator doors you can actually see there's two t's there's two translator doors on the like on this pathway i thought it's kind of curious why they put two there it's the same translator we're not even going to do that you don't even need to open these translator doors this is the only other time i'm ever going to walk around here and you might as well just go down because we might find a little secret like, check this out. There's a dude just right there. Oh. Oh, snap. He's back alive. Uh, this is the Dark Missile Trooper. A completely optional boss, but he has a health bar. Uh, he's, he's a big guy, and he fires uh, big missiles at you. But you can fire big missiles at him. You can also use the light beam if you wanted to. You'll notice he dies rather quick. Oh, especially when you miss entirely. But he can also burn, and then he dies very quick. But he drops... Ooh! A missile expansion! Yeah, it's a mini boss only for a missile expansion, and he's completely optional. You could probably miss him if you wanted to, but... Uh, where's the fun in that? Yeah, what a, what a curious little mini boss chilling there. I believe he's there as soon as you can come back here. Which is after the... Um... The... I guess you get the purple translator, which would be in the... I think it would be after the, um... The... You visit, um... Well, I guess the, the temple in the Agon Waste, because that's the purple one. It's the green one... For, uh... The Torvus Bog. And then you can imagine it's the blue one afterwards. But yeah. Uh, there's actually nothing else to experience here, but obviously, if you remember, there were two doors here. I hate this one. I never... Oh, I rolled up first go. There's another missile expansion. You may be wondering why the model was different between these two, and that is a good question. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Two missile expansions greet you if you re-explore down here literally any time after getting the Morpho Bomb. Uh, more, more dead dudes also come back, I guess. I guess you knock him down and they're like, oh, might as well just get back up when Samus leaves and comes back, so... Yeah. Nah, there's no other better time to get them, so you might as well. Alright, uh, maybe there are some better times, because... You'll come close to here later. Uh, also, there's some... Disgusting black creatures. Uh, here, so... But we're just gonna take the time to visit the Agon Waste again, because why not? This is all mostly optional, but I think the convenience of visiting this now is nice. And it does flow nicely. Like, it makes sense to come here 
after you've done, but we'll get into that, so. Uh, so anyway, um, I think the controversial topic is to bring up something directly tied to politics, because that seems to be the trend from the last week, and what better thing to talk about than the Australian government and <laughs> decommissioning the 3G network. Oh boy. So, okay, uh, first of all, I'm not actually an expert on this. There's one guy uh, by the name of, hold on, I'm even gonna like tab out and get the video and hopefully it doesn't autoplay on me. Please don't autoplay on me. Oh, where's the video? Yeah, here it is. Uh, it is gonna, well, it does auto, oh, there was a sound. By a guy called Hugh Jeffries. And uh, there's also a corresponding article uh, on Substack by James Parker, a real long article, it's 28 minutes, so I'd recommend giving it a very decent read. Um, but uh, these two, uh, particularly, yeah, these two have been uh, discussing the, um, the announcement from the Australian federal government to, you know, we want to decommission our 3G network. Now, I guess, to me as a layman, well, I'm not like that much of a layman because all the explanations I'm like, oh, really? Okay. Like, I, I get that. I think there's more layman takes uh, out there, but I don't know my uh, my telco stuff that much. I can't tell you, like, what bandwidth things use or what technologies things use or whatever. Like, I can recognize names and I can tell you that kind of stuff, um, but I don't know enough about, like, what phones do what, so... Uh, also, we're... Oh, hold on. Before I before I leave, uh, scan this blue tree. Here, in particular. I, that's that's a plant you can scan. I don't know why. Uh, we visited this room already, but just remember, if you hadn't <laughs> opened it from the other side, it, it awkwardly walls you out. That's what I mean by... It's just... Oh, it's painful. Anyway, you can see this is clearly a boost ball track. Um, don't go left. You can spot up the top there, and you can hear it as well. If you do your boost just right, you can pop up on this ledge and uh, shoot your dark beam at this one portal. You'll see what I mean by it. there is no better time to get this than now, because because <laughs> it's just here, man. Like, uh, look at that! It's a it's a missile. Woo! How cool is that? How many missiles have I got on the stream? Three already. Yeah. Uh, and you can see that there's a uh, well, this this awkward little tiny ledge. It juts out too far, so you can't, uh, boost ball up. Also, unlike the light version, you can see that there is no door here. Also, you need the Seeker Missile to, like, keep going on there. So, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to the, uh, up to the, uh, portal and jump back. We literally came here just to get the missile. And open that one door that we're about to open up in a bit. I'm gonna ignore the space pirates who keep phasing in. Uh, but yeah, no, so we want to decommission our 3G towers. My layman take would be, oh, it's to save, um, you know, like, uh, bandwidth in the sense of, like, now we don't need a certain width of radio frequency or electromagnetic frequency dedicated to doing 3G around the country. Now we can decommission that and, um, you know, that will also help improve infrastructure costs, because then it's like, oh, everyone's only using 4G and 5G now, so that's alright. Seems okay, we've had 4G for maybe the better part of a decade. Seems okay, kind of sucks for anyone who's got a, a phone older than a, a decade, but maybe, and honestly to me, it seems a little too soon as well, because phones are critical infrastructure, and knowing some people, they may not upgrade it. So anyway, let's use a Seeker Missile. I'm su you're gonna see me shockingly like miss the Seeker Missile quite a bit. I don't find it's the most consistent thing in the world. Uh, but there's an elevator here. Ooh! An elevator, you say? This is actually one of the like greatest like elevator spots I've seen in <laughs> this game, by the way. It's so like... It's exactly where you need it. Torvis Bog. Okay. Okay. Except you need another to, uh, Seeker Missile to get out. I like the way they position a lot of these Seeker Missile doors, like, they're not just, oh, ring around the thing, but... Yeah, you'll see stuff like that, where it's like, oh, missed one, sorry, gotta try it again. Oh, missed one, sorry, gotta try it again. Oh, missed, oh, okay. The moment I go, oh, you know, sometimes I miss them. There you go, fourth time's the charm. Go through here, and... 
Hang on, this looks familiar. Yes, that's right, there's an elevator right here, underneath the temple. And it's very convenient because uh, we're gonna immediately... Well, so I'll to hopefully get some more missile ammo. We'll try and get a little bit more, at least. Um, if you head left from the elevator, we'll arrive at the super missile door, which you can open up immediately after doing the temple above. But you might as well get those other items. And we find ourselves another elevator. Ooh, another elevator. Hit this elevator. This is one of those just it goes down kinds of elevators. Um, and you can see, yeah, we've got one of these uh, below the map kind of areas. Uh, welcome to uh, an entire underground section of the Torvus Bog. We sort of navigated, for the most part, the whole thing here. Like, you can probably tell there's a... You know, a little bit of an extra room there, but yeah, no, that's basically the entirety of above the ground. But below the ground, we have um, another area, which is great fun. And I love this idea of the two stages of uh, each world. Um, also, with arms wide open. I get my copyright strike for singing, singing Creed. It's worth it, though. I don't care that they were called puffers or bluffers in the, in the previous game. I forgot they were there. Armored puff Puffer? I'm pretty sure. Something like that. Uh, but yeah. This is, uh, yeah, this is the under, the underneath the temple, which involves this wonderful kind of sewage system. If you like a sewer level, this is almost just for you. Uh, and yes, there is yet another, yet another. Uh, look down through the grating and you'll be able to scan a blog. Very nice. Uh, but also, look at this, uh, Seeker Missile door, and you'll see underneath it, there's actually this, like, pathway that's jutting out. Um, your goal is, uh, there are, it's very hard to see, sorry, but, um, there are three of these, and our goal will be to activate all three of them to raise these forks up. Each one, well, actually not each one, literally just the first one. Actually, no, yeah, each one you activate does open up the pathway above it, but the problem is, is that, um, hi there. Just gonna walk out of the way of you. Um, yeah, there's no scan on the other ones, so uh, we're gonna have to use this and uh, shoot ourselves back up. Um, so yeah, uh, oh, make sure you don't fall all the way down. Although you can work your way back up, it's not too bad. Uh, but yeah, let's use this new platform that we have. And shoot the seek missile here. We got another missile at least. It's a freebie, you might as well use it. Unless you're going for a 1% run. Um, but the way this section works is that, uh, just imagine it like a triangle, uh, and you don't even have to imagine it. I think the map will highlight it soon, but effectively you can see uh, underneath there's three doors in the eight o'clock and the uh, four o'clock position. So we've gone, you know, 12 o'clock, because that's the only way you can go. Also, oh, oh, follow the particle effect. And he activates the door. Ooh. Very nice. Uh, there's a couple of things going on in this room, I'll tell you that as well. Ooh. Check it out, it's uh, Dark Samus again. Just chilling. It's because Dark Samus isn't going to have an opportunity to show up. Oh. Dark Samus got rid of the... Uh, the um, the letterboxing, though, I'll tell you that. Uh, so, for some odd reason, these uh, blogs are powering the, the spinner. Uh, they are kind of annoying. You can definitely get them with a very well timed super missile, uh, but they are very annoying because they're so close up to you. Uh, and you can see things like that where it's like they're coming at you, but your shot doesn't quite get them, or it does get them. Um, mental note the game is forcing you to be able to beat these guys. And also to take hits from them. Oh, hi. You want to you take the hit? I hate these enemies because sometimes... Actually, very often, my hit does not land. Uh, they also will come at you if you like, tap them with the, <laughs> with the beam. So, they'll get aggressive. There we go. There's actually a, a piece of lore just here as well if you want to scan this. Uh, we were not prepared to fight a long war. The forces of the enemy outnumbered ours vastly. 
accent. We sought a way to end the war quickly, without extended combat. We decided to build a device to recover our lost planetary energy from Dark Aether. Without this energy, the world, the Dark World would cease to be, and our world would be restored to stability. Very nice. Uh, but we've got two paths to go down. Uh, I'm going to uh, ignore what the game is about to suggest, and that's going down that way. I'm going to spin it around one extra time. And I'd probably say for first time players, this is a bit of a beginner's trap, and I actually think this way is probably the nicer way. I'll let you know in 15 minutes exactly why I've done it this way. Uh, in theory, either way works. Um, now, in each direction, you'll find a little whoosh, 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 whoosh. A very cool, like, little underwater tube. Actually, well, I'm still underwater. The whole thing is flooded anyways. This tube isn't doing too much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, power the, the bomb slot and now you can uh, go through this because it's it doesn't damage you it's just a blowy fan it's blowing you too hard and it shoots you out the other side now we're in this room uh, this room features everyone's favorite enemy uh, just a, a, a pad it's not actually an enemy uh, we've also got a scan all the way over there um, I think actually the best thing probably to do is to hop down and use your dark beam to shoot both of these crystals It'll spin around forever until you, you leave the room and then they inexplicably turn back, so... Our studies of the Ing revealed the source of their attacks as dark energy. We built weapons to use this energy, thinking it could overload enemy targets and eliminate them. We soon learned our error, as the dark beam was not of great effect on the Ing. We then began to develop a weapon that used light energy. This weapon would dispatch the Ing with terrible efficiency. Wow, 60% of all scans. Ooh, very nice. Um, so yeah, let's hop back out. Back out of the water. I love how they really do force you to just bear the water in this game. Metroid Prime 1, you could very, like, easily avoid most of the- well, I mean, you know, the whole underwater section was entirely after the gravity suit. And the gravity suit was in an area that had, like, three rooms that you had to swim in. Like, you had a, a little bit, but not a ton. This whole underwater section definitely forces you into just like, oh, I'm trudging, I'm trudging so much. Uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, guess what the next item is. <laughs> so yeah, through this portal, uh, we will find ourselves in another world, in another part of the world, in a beautiful house, and a beautiful wife. Uh, I don't think there's actually anything to scan in this room other than you've got some dark pirates coming up. We're going to completely try and ignore them by jumping up here and using the spinner, whoops, using the spinner to spin this laser. It looks like I literally just spun it around. Nothing much. But it spun it in the other world as well. So yeah. Uh, we'll go back through the portal now. It's better than engaging these guys. Uh, watch out for the purple. Purple is not fun. Uh, but yeah, no, so, uh, so the government wanted to shut down the things by this point. Now, uh, a timeline of, of events, uh, I believe Telstra had raised concerns about doing this. They said, can we make it so that perhaps we uh, are still allow emergency calls through 3G over data or things like that. And this starts to raise an interesting point, which is there are phones that only use data. They actually don't have uh, calling capabilities. Um, it turns out that uh, my understanding of 4G was uh, very, very simple and wrong. 4G is not just 3G, but on a different frequency and, you know, it's faster, like that kind of stuff. Um, you may know of a thing called LTE, which is, I have no idea what it stands for. Um, also, yes, uh, the whole point of that laser powers this, which means this is jutting out now. Very nice. We can now use this uh, cannon to shoot our way up and hit this light door. Also, uh, very note, um, the door down there is our mythical fourth beam that we don't have. And it's very arbitrarily that, but I feel like, you know, you gotta, you gotta throw those doors in somewhere. So yeah. Uh, work your way out here, and we should find ourselves a little, little panel to scan. This is another one of those panels. But it sticks out. Also note that these enemies have become 
Blocklings. Little tiny, little tiny blocklings. Very nice. Uh, the easiest thing I usually do is I drop down, and at this point I resave. Now the reason why I resave is because activating the third platform actually raises everything up, and that cannon that shoots you back up to the top of the room is not accessible anymore, which is sucky because there's a boss afterwards and the walk is still quite a fair bit to activate everything so um, I generally find the other path to be just that tiny bit quicker um, and so if you're gonna have to do one before you you know if you before you die at the next boss and so oh hi little Logan you tiny blog uh, if you're gonna die at, at, a, at the boss you may as well have the longer of the two routes resolved um, so yeah on your second path through this hallway as well, uh, get out your scan visor because you'll find everyone's favorite enemy. Little tiny, little tiny crabs. These are seed bursters. I love their fascination with these like enemies that crawl around on ceilings and stuff. Just kind of fun, so. Uh, little bloglings have shown up as well, not the big ones. Little tiny bloglings aren't that aggressive, but they do sometimes swim, swim around, which is a bit odd. Uh, spin around this platform twice. Now to the position it was trying to tell us to go to before. We should be able to now go through here. Just again, a reminder, if you didn't get that one scanned there, uh, now's an opportunity. It's gone now because I've already scanned it. I also like how uh, we've got light and dark um, <laughs> beams activating these doors. Uh, we've got another one of these kind of hallways. Uh, just ignore it. We can't do anything here right now. And in fact... The water is going to blow you exactly the way you need to be, so... That's why it's quicker. As well as also the room that we in inevitably go to. Even though it does have a portal, you actually don't need to go through the portal. It's just here. Uh, there are two things you can scan. One is there's a... Uh, I think they're both above the water. I'll just jump our way out. Uh, and they're both lore, so I'm about to, you know, reading dump. There's there's your door. The effect's kind of cool on the door. I like it. Very nice. Uh, but yeah. Okay, let's let's go for the lore first. It's just chilling up there, but you can see it, so. In time, the mm began to possess Luminoth as well as creatures. Friends and family members became the enemy, spilling Luminoth blood across the land. Desperate, we devised shielding to prevent ing possession. It was effective, but not perfect. Should the shielding fail, all Luminoth were prepared to self-terminate rather than become a weapon for the ing. I love, I love the thing. Gugh, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. What a craven! What craven savages are the ing trapped in the catacombs with no chance of rescue? I fought them to the last. I watched them feed upon their dead. I heard them pressing the lesser of their number into the front ranks, that my blast would take them. At least their leader stood against me in a battle. He was a foe worthy of a Luminoth warrior. <laughs> okay, sure. There he goes. Open the door. Get on the floor. And uh, check it out, it's another Brizgy. You remember, from ages ago. Uh, but yeah, no, so it turns out that um, uh, calling on 4G is actually not like native supported. It's actually over the internet. So you may see your phone sometimes kick in with a thing that says uh, VO LTE in the top, you know, on the, on the reception thing. And what that's, oh, so rip that blog link. Rip. Um, and what that's meant to do is that it's actually like, oh, it implements it via internet calling. So, uh, technically the, the, the communication protocols are different for that. Now, consolidating over internet sounds like a neat idea on purpose, on, on, sorry, on, on, uh, on paper. Uh, also, yes, now we can't go back up, so you're forced to go down and inevitably have to fight the boss, which kind of sucks. Uh, bring out your scan visor because we've got everyone's favorite enemy as well. The ice spawn in the middle of the stairwell fish. There you go. Actually, we've already we've already seen these guys. They're in that like first hallway that we had to go down. Um, but yeah, probably get a bunch of beam ammo if you haven't already as well. These these guys are great at dropping like all of it.
Uh, this is a fun little room as well because uh, the actual thing you need to go to is directly underneath where you were, so just uh, hop down around there. And here we are! What a wonderful room. With ourselves this item, we now can shoot bubbles out of our back, but most importantly, we can swim in water. This is the, uh, hold on, All right, we'll get there, we'll get there. This is the gravity boost. The gravity boost, uh, supersedes the gravity suit. Uh, it still does the same thing, but you can actually rise in the water if you hold B. Sort of like a little triple jump. Uh, also, just like the first game, uh, your visibility in the water is a lot better, suddenly. Uh, but yeah, no, you can do this, like, third jump while in the water. You can get a lot of crazy height, uh, but it's mostly just to make these underwater bits a little bit, you know, more palatable. <laughs> There's a couple others in the game, but we sort of trudged through most of it by this point. Also, this is the only time in any Metroid Prime game so far, we'll see if Metroid Prime 4 in a few months uh, does this, uh, where the item is before the boss. It's the only boss that does this. Every other boss is before it. Also, he uh, eats the can. Uh, this is the Alpha Blog. He, uh, he dashes towards you, so watch out. Um, the Alpha Blog is one of the most annoying bosses, I think, is actually in the game. Not only does he deal quite a fair bit of damage, uh, what you gotta do is that you gotta, again, like the regular blogs, provoke him. He's then gonna open his mouth, and that's perfect for a super missile, or um, probably a strat more people recommend is a dark beam charge shot, or even the dark burst if you've got that. Um, I often take the hit. What you're really meant to do is you're meant to side jump. But you'll see, like, uh, I'll show an example of if you're walking to the side, he is gonna hit you. You need to, you need to do a proper side jump. Uh, if you're using a controller that doesn't have, uh, notches, good luck. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you want to, like, tap him a little bit and then ch charge up, super missile, and then duck away. Did you notice how I didn't deal damage then? That's because at this point in the fight, now your shots magically will just miss. Like that. And it gets very annoying. On easy... Oh, oh sorry, on the... Well, okay, that one is an understandable miss. On the normal difficulty, I think you've got a decent amount of health up to this point. You've got four um, energy tanks. He deals 30 damage hit. Also, watch out if he does another dive afterwards. Um, but on hard, where he's basically got double the health and deals like 45% more damage, he's doing like 45 damage or 50 damage a shot. Um, that is going to add up. And this becomes one of the trickiest fights because... Ah, it's kind of awkward having to hit him. I think I actually had a fairly good run just then, but... Yeah, no, he is one of the trickier ones, so... If you're playing on hard, by the way, do not, like, miss the save. Commit to... Commit to the save. You will... You will thank me for that one. Um, and I love how literally his life force was powering this one fan thing. Um, but it's just chilling here. It's just... Well, actually, there's one on both sides. Uh, jump over to this ledge here. And one last big jump forcing you to understand this thing. Um, but yeah. Now, uh, this is one of those uh, blink and you'll miss it kind of moments. Turn around and uh, you'll use your gravity suit to bounce up here where there's a portal. You're gonna, you're gonna kick yourself if you miss this, by the way. <laughs> you're gonna be like, oh, really? Really? But yeah, go through this portal. And, uh, look, it's one of the keys. Just chilling right here. Also, a, a reminder, there's no, like, you had the purple poop. But there's not actually a lot of water in the Dark Temple, so. Um, but yeah. Now, uh, you'll see there's two yellow doors surrounding us. Can't do anything about that. Turn around. Leave. This key is literally just here. It's just sitting right here in this one room. Oh, this happened while testing as well. It didn't load the screen because it thought I just went through it. Why reload it? And then it was like, ah, he's gonna load the other room instead, so... Um... But yeah, it, it's... It, and we're not getting that yellow item uh, before the, the, the temple boss. So it's just like, yep, nope, you just have to notice that you gotta go in there. And if you miss it, whoops. So... But yeah, now navigating the waters, a breeze, if you will. Um... But yeah, it turns out... Okay, so it turns out that uh, phone calls are over a thing called VoiceOver LTE. Uh, VoiceOver LTE is not commonly supported by every single device that implements uh, or connects to 4G or 5G data, which is a curious point. Um, but also, yeah, a, a good number of phones sometimes will go, 
oh, you know, like, uh, like, uh, I have, uh, like, I, I expect there to be a 3G tower or something like that. And, um, there apparently was an Optus bug from last year, which was sort of around this, where phones would have connection, they'd be told they're on the network, but then they try and do an emergency call and it's like, nope, nope, can't do it. Um, Optus has decided, to, or really all the telcos, inevitably decided to just go with it. What could possibly go wrong? And in turn, we have now reached a, um, an annoying situation where there's lots of, um, also I believe we can go down here, and now you can, yeah, you can see this uh, morph ball slot, bomb slot. First of all, you can see it, and also we can uh, activate it, because, oh, we can just roll out, roll out of bed. It's a bit of a thin ledge here. Um, yeah, all the telcos have sort of went, okay, well, the date's rolled around, time to turn off the network. Uh, they did it on slightly different dates, so different providers would have been, you know, affected at different times. Um, but, uh, inevitably, uh, how did they implement this 3G turn off? Well, first of all, uh, it was sort of a soft turn off. Uh, if your device kept working, then it kept working. It was like, oh, okay, sure. Uh, but inevitably, all of these telcos, I think, implemented this as their own kind of device, like, firewalls. They basically went with, here's a list of devices that either should or should not be able to access the network. Full stop. Not necessarily 3G, because they've turned off 3G now, or even 4G. Oh, wait, hold on, just before. <laughs> I'm mildly out of order myself, sorry. Very important, just before. <laughs> Just before I leave, because we're going to do a bunch of stuff in the Dark World. So I wanted to get one last item first. <laughs> I'm talking about phone network towers. Uh, it's very intriguing stuff. Um, but they, yeah, they basically implemented a bunch of these device uh, firewalls. Um, the device firewalls are, I think, based on the IMEI detector. Uh, which is something that can uniquely identify your phone model. And there's a good repository of that kind of stuff, and, and your, your SIM card, well, actually, your phone will provide that. Um, I love how the gravity suit, or the gravity booster, suddenly, like, jets don't mean anything. Uh, so, back in this room where the dark uh, door was, um, we need to go, I think, to oh, the center one, because it's going fast. And you want to do your sort of jet triple jump. It's a bit tricky. I'd probably say the, the markings on the... Hold on, you'll see me do it again, where it's like, the moment the ball passes one of the marking... Oh, maybe maybe not passes, like, just before it. Yeah. Look at the little, like, ridges, and that's how I lined that up. An energy tank is there for your troubles, and it's definitely well worth getting that right now, because, uh, again, not a great opportunity to really come back. In fact, I actually don't think there's any need to come back through the hallway. Like, once you've once you've unlocked the door, why not just go through the door every time? Uh, let's see if we can do a pro jump off this ledge. Nope, can't do it. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, your IMEI doesn't necessarily... Well, I mean, ideally, you know, you should have, I guess, access to the network. If your phone is blocked, then it should be, you know, it shouldn't have any capabilities to connect to 3G anyways, but... Oh, sorry, to 4G anyways, but it does. And there's a very confusing thing where also different phones will sometimes have different bits of firmware. And um, also, uh, these are new enemies technically. Dark Grenchler. I love the Grenchler. But now these are Dark Grenchlers. So let's head over to this door because they literally don't give you a choice right here. I don't think I showed the map in, in all of its glory as well, by the way. I love this just ring around. And yes, you could probably tell that both of these uh, fourth beam doors will connect to each other via one pathway. But that's basically this under, underground area in a nutshell. It's this kind of just looping the, under, the underneath bit. Shoot through this hallway and, uh, well, it's mostly the same, except it's filled with pistons for some reason. Everyone likes a good piston room. Is it called the piston room? No, it's just under Transit 2, as opposed to Transit Tunnel East. They numbered them as opposed to compassing them. Ooh. Uh, anyway, so yeah, this blacklist 
Um, well, first of all, different telcos implement it as a blacklist, some implement it as a whitelist. Optus is famous for doing the whitelist. Um, they've got some hunter rings here. This is a curious room, because it's like, oh, like, okay. We're sort of just crossing across it, right? There's nothing even to scan, it's just kind of, like, yeah. But it's a neat little room, good to note. Anyways, we've got ourselves uh, the, the other transfer chamber. Um, but yeah, also, yeah, different device firmwares will maybe support the calling and maybe won't. Like, uh, for example, I believe iOS, it had to be through an update. I think other phones, sometimes it's through an update. By the way, when you drop down here, uh, do a jump and then lean left and then go right. There's a missile just chilling right there. It's a little hard to hear. You could hear it. But you definitely won't be able to see that. <laughs> sort of have to guess based on the holes in the in the um the pipes. I wonder if a 3D model there's actually a hole there or whether it's just whatever. That's a cheeky missile. Very easy for people to miss. Um anyway, we can use this to open this door. And it also activates all the platforms around the room. Because uh, remember, we came in and straight out of this room. Here we go. Also, a bunch of space pirates appear. I'm going to, again, try to ignore them. Because you don't need to address them. You're going to want to make your way all the way to the far ledge. Keep going around. And then onto this high bit right here. That's our exit door. Because immediately underneath is uh, the portal that we were going through. We've got little reaper vines. Oh, sorry. Uh, darkling tentacles. Sorry. They're not reaper vines. There we go. And here we are, back into the central room, but now in the dark version. It looks a little funky, actually. It's a curious room. Um, you should be able to drop down just a bit. Not all the way, because you don't really need to. But since there's no water, don't worry about, like, never being able to jump back up. But the cannon still works. Dark breed every time. Uh, there's also, as you can see, there's no door to go back up. So this does, like, just exist on its own. It doesn't connect to the other side of the, um, the map, unlike uh, it does in the Agon Waste. Um, but at least we still have a save point that's in both the dark and the light versions. Uh, so, okay, so, moral of the story. TLDR, uh, every telco in Australia implemented their own individual whitelist or blacklist of which phones can actually connect to their networks today. That is confusing... Uh, because sometimes your phone just doesn't have a patch or doesn't have an update. Sometimes your phone does work, by the way, and the list is wrong. Sometimes your phone doesn't work and the list is wrong and you're still allowed on and then you get told you can't actually do the emergency call, which is going to really hurt people, by the way, when they accidentally do that. Or rather when they try to use emergency numbers and then it's like, oh, sorry, <laughs> non-supportive phone. Uh, they sent text messages to people, I think, mostly on the list. I don't think there's any weird ones there, but uh, this also hurts tourists and uh, very importantly as well, uh, the Melbourne Transit, which was still using 3G in various trams and buses. Good job, guys. Good job. Um, this seems like such... A, I think there was a report as well that came out where they basically had 500,000 or so actively used devices still on the network. Uh, for the 3G network. By the way, here's a Grapple Guardian. It's like the, the, uh, you know, the Grenchler, but he's big. The Grapple Guardian is a very easy fight in my eyes. How do you fight him? Well, he's sort of like the She-Goths, where it's like you shoot him in the face, and then eventually he'll get stunned and then turn around. I like doing two charge shots and then just hitting him off with some individual bullets, and then eventually he'll get a bit- oh, whoops. 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 No more fall. I'm not doing more fall, sorry. Um, I'll try that again. So two charge shots. Hit him with some individual bits, and then the moment he reacts, charge a shot. Super oh my gosh, wow, I've done it twice. Ah, oh. He does do that, though, if you, if you want. It gives you ample time to actually get him with a super missile. You could also use the light beam if you wanted to. I'll show you exactly what the light beam does. The light beam's arguably a little easier to use, actually. Uh, but yeah, what you're really meant to be doing is, uh, you're meant to trick him into, oh, sort of, into grappling these beams made out of electricity. 
He'll get stuck on it. Maybe he'll try right now. There you go. This gives you a free shot. Uh, at some point, very near the end of his health, he'll, uh, his butt will break off. Where then it will describe that uh, he's injured. And he will then try to protect himself with the grapple beam. Also, he takes a sweet time going from phase one to phase two. Um, this sometimes means that he uses his grapple beam to protect his eye. Oh, sorry, protect his butt, which means that his face is actually exposed. But since you're already shooting his face, you see what I mean? Like, yeah. But he's over real quick. Even on hard difficulty, he is quite a joke. He is quite an easy boy. So. And I, like, barely even, like, tried on that one. That, that one's an easy boy. I'm sorry, man. You're the weakest link. Anyways, I guess, what what did the Grapple Guardian hold? Oh my gosh. But very nice. It's always good a good feeling to get the Grapple Beam back. And then uh, also the, the, the doors opened. Uh, but yeah, about half a million devices were still actively using the, um, the, the, the 3G network. And the fact that it's like, hey, there's lots of devices where it's like, they used to be able to emergency call, and now they can't, and they're just casually, like, caught out. Great job, guys. Great job. Um, it's sort of being a bit brushed over the, the, you know, brush under the rug. Um, but I think this is actually probably one of the most, like, serious like, bits of, you know, I'd say malpractice? Telcos are something that, like, people inadvertently rely on quite a lot. We need to have the infrastructure in order to, you know, perform our internet and even our mobile internet kinds of operations. Um, I like how with the, uh, with the grapple beam, you can now grapple. Like this. That's fun. Um, but note that, uh, there's only, uh, one door. We actually, <laughs> this one room doesn't connect anywhere else, so it's fully locked off. So you might as well just go this way to the closer portal. Hi there, Reapers. Hi there, Reapers. How are you doing? Um, the fact that, like, these these uh, telcos sort of went with this anyways. Like, really, I know the government said, oh, you got to do it by this point. But it's like, do you? Should you? Necessarily? This issue was a lot more complicated. And some of the telcos, Telstra, for example, pointed this out. They said, hey, yeah, like, there's something... There's more to this. It's more complicated. Like, we could do a simple soft rollout. Um, one thing I actually, I, I think more people should do is brownouts, where you, uh, you take your service and you temporarily turn it off. And then you let people know, hey, when we do the step, if you're affected for this amount of time, you will be effective when it goes and takes place. Then suddenly you will have a lot of people not get caught out. Now, it, is there a 100% a reliable way of doing that? Uh, I'm not too sure. Um, also, I like how you don't need to shoot the uh, things anymore. You can just uh, use this to swing on over to the uh, the boost ball or to the cannon. And shoot ourselves up, up and out. Arms wide open. There they go. Oh, I should have done a different song that time. Can you take me higher? <laughs> I love the accent. It's so good. Where are they from? Anyway, use your new gravity boost to just get out. Like, you just you just fly out, that's it. Um, and that's, for the most part, everything we need to do down here. We, we'll, we'll return sometimes, but we don't need to revisit here for now. In fact, actually, such a nice thing is happening right now. We have two of the keys. Because remember, we got the other key right after the boost ball. And then we got this key right after the gravity boost. The third key... I think in all three of the uh, of the, the worlds of the game are all immediately next to the temple. So technically, you could have a yeah. Actually, oh no, you need the grapple beam to do one thing. I know it's like you try to go there and then it's like oh, there's a grapple beam kind of thing in the way. So. Come on, door. There we go. Time to... Uh, 
I hate these guys. I really hate them. Cause they're just they're just here to waste your time. The light beam doesn't even do what it should be doing, which is burning them. Like sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. So, uh, but yeah. So I, there's a lot of just hand wavy stuff happening, but like, why? Why do we need to de like from a government perspective? Well, it's not for, you know, brush under the rug money purposes, right? Hopefully not. Um, so I, I don't really know what's the incentive to, like, not do the rollout slower. Or to warn people a bit more. Because uh, the telcos didn't quite realize that so many people would be affected until a lot later. Because it used to be, like, painfully obvious. And then they were like, oh, hang on, it's not painfully obvious. There's a lot of devices that, even though they say 5G on them only do data over 5G and they actually don't implement all the all the uh you know the features that actually are needed now all of a sudden um and then the fact that like companies like Optus are doing a whitelist means that they will inevitably reach this point where new phones just may not just work they, ju they just won't work unless Optus decrees it so this puts a lot of uh I guess, customer tr faith away from Optus in a way, well, probably away from Optus because I think Telstra's doing a blacklist and specifically written down devices that don't work, or at least hopefully don't work. Um, and then they're just suddenly blocked and they're like, oh, but that should be working. So, yeah. Uh, anyways, let's just wander all the way uh, back here to this one. Let's uh, jump on the ledge to get there. You're gonna probably want to stock up on your ammo as well. But I love the I love the way this place flows. Like other than having to go to get the seeker missile, it flows very nicely. It's good fun. So, oh thanks guys. If you're pro, yeah, shoot the shoot the beacons. They're the dummies who are sitting on the beacons here. Where is he? Oh, hi there. He'll probably not wander into the beacon, that's a bit too obvious for him. Ah! Every time. Oh, that was sound effect? Sound effect. Hmm. <laughs> Curious sound effect, but sure. Ah. Yes, I know I haven't saved since the grapple guardian. That was a pro shot right there. It's only two dudes, but even then, the save room's very close. So again, another one of those yellow doors. I wonder what the next item's gonna be. I'm just stocking up on as much light ammo as I can. Because it'll be good to have. Don't worry about the health, don't worry. We're good, we're good. Uh, but yeah, nah, messy scenario. Um, and uh, good on the, 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 the videos and the, the, the Medium article writing about it. Uh, this is called a Lift Vine Crystal. It's like a crystal, but it lifts. There's nothing in this room, don't worry. Other than the lift fine crystal. On both sides. Here we go. So here we are, we're in the final room. Uh, this is a bit of an awkward grapple. You can get there, just watch out for the huntering below you trying to hit you like that. Because that kind of gets a bit annoying when it gets here. But I believe you can... Yeah, there you go. You can, you can still get it from <laughs> the crown, which is at least nice and convenient. Anyway, that's all the keys, so that's nice. Yeah, it just flows nicer if you're just doing the keys along the way. Uh, this was a map room- did I go in here in the- oops. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, did I go in here in the- in the light world or no? It's just a map room in the original- uh, in the light world, but yeah, here it's a save. So, use that save.
There we go. I don't think you... Ah, might as well just top up on a little white ammo or dark ammo as well. It comes up a little bit in the fight, but not a lot, a bit. Uh, also, there's no high door. It's only a low door here, so you may as well just hop down and head on through. Um, they also decide to... I love the look of this room as well, even though you're not going to see the high side version. There we go. Um, but yeah, it is a temple, so therefore we have to have a temple kind of look. Um, there's actually uh, two rooms that we can visit. So first of all, there's the room on the left, which is a... Actually, even better, let's just show it off, shall we? That was a pro shot, wasn't it? Um, we have a ammo recharge, so if you, if you did actually need ammo, well... They've, they've flat out given it to you here. There's no reason to not enter this fight with full ammo. And the animation's always cool. Very nice. Uh, and then the other way, which you probably notice, and this way would have uh, led down into the temple itself, or into the um, underneath section itself, has a super missile door. Let's open the super missile door. And in it is, it's an energy tank, which is very warranted, very welcome. That's already six, there's actually 14 of them in this game, there were only 13 in the last game, so if that top of the screen looks a little different compared to the first game, that's why. They're trying to fit in an extra one. Uh, but yeah, let's use all three keys, and Welcome ourselves to the boss chamber. Which uh, obviously has to flood the chamber with... Grape juice, I guess. It's a cool way to, to open up and enter in. I don't think there's a single sanctuary that doesn't have a very dramatic opening. They have to hide the doors just to make it a bit cooler here. Uh, so check it out. If we scan this, we see nothing. Object scan complete is a cocoon. A field of dark energy is disrupting deep scanning ability. Unable to scan bioform within cocoon. Energy may be mutating the bioform as there are signs of extreme growth present in the cocoon structure. And you can scan these things around the outside, which uh, tell you it's uh, organic. Man, if you shoot it, will it break? Wow, it broke. Oh, it doesn't reform, okay. Um, this is very obviously Seeker Missile territory, but sure. <laughs> uh. Well, that was easy. Oh, it wasn't easy. Because now he's swimming. Or maybe it is easy. Good thing this platform has a lot of crystals on it. Fish. So, uh, welcome to uh, a very interesting boss for one point alone. Uh, the boss has a weak point on his stomach, and the weak point is not lock onable unless you scan him. How strange. This is the Chika Lava. There you go, vulnerable area detected. Adjusting lock on point to take advantage of this. Seriously, try doing this fight and not scan him. It's impossible. It's actually impossible. Also, Dark Shredders. Uh, these will occasionally get launched at you. Um, use them... Uh, oh. So you see that I was locking onto his stomach just then. His stomach is not accessible if you haven't scanned him, so it gets very annoying otherwise. Uh, watch your radar. He'll pop up twice or once if you hit him. Oops. Okay. And you want to try and get him with a super missile. It's not the easiest, so don't feel bad. They're chucking tons of ammo at you as well. Uh, also, when he does this like little like breath of fresh air... You can hit him, uh, and you can hit him for quite a bit afterwards, which is a bit curious. Um, he's coming up, so we're going to get him. Try and preemptively use the super missile before you actually lock onto him, because the moment you can lock onto him, it immediately snaps. Uh, very rarely will you get the opportunity to shoot him again after he's already, you know, gotten hit by a super missile. He takes it personally. Uh, the fastest way to deal damage is actually to use the light beam here, because there's no better time to use the light beam. Uh, sometimes when you hit him, he'll do this. 
Uh, but since you're locked onto his belly, it usually does damage. Oh. To get out of here, you gotta shoot him enough. And, whoops. If you, if you get a bit too close, he'll not find that very nice. But then you can just shoot him anyways, so that's all fine. Oops, there we go. He's a, yeah, he's an interesting fight. Oops. Now, obviously, I'd probably switch to the, um, I think the Dark Beam actually works pretty alright for the, uh, um, for the bit where he hops up. Oh, terrible shot. This is probably one of the trickier fights. I haven't been mentioning the, um, the Retro Treatments times, by the way, which, uh, did get extended, uh, for the, um, the final boss. I complained, I was like, ah, oh, it's like six minutes remaining on the time, that's impossible. He's changed it to five minutes now, which is, uh, an extra minute. And I think it's probably quite possible at this point on. Uh, so yeah, let's use the Dark Beam, because I might as well. You can actually dodge his, uh, shots as well, which works alright. Yeah, that does a bit of damage, so... Uh, but yeah, I think the goal is to try and, like, one cycle or two cycle the boss. Really get him, like, immediately on the super missile shots. And then hopefully he's not, like, taking too much time on the, on the up. Eh. Like that. Like, I'm getting distracted by the little larvae, so time-wise is not the best, but I'm not a speedrunner. So it's okay. There you go. Oh, it hits him pretty alright, for the most part. Let's see what happens when you hit him with the light beam, by the way. So you wait for him to come up, and then you kind of shoot, and you'll get him with a fair bit. So watch his health again. Yeah, like, it's it's a decent amount of damage, for what it is. Oh. On. I thought I'd get him there. Oh well. Do I dare do this or just... There you go. Well, I wanted a little bit of light ammo, but okay. Uh, he usually doesn't do his big leap. He'll usually do the side of the platform every time. Uh, after a bit of health, but yeah, no. He's done, so. He's not too bad. He's not too bad. And, uh, obviously, uh, when the platforms move, and the door doesn't reveal itself, then, uh... Well, turns out you missed the other one. <laughs> Whoops. Open sesame seed, it's a big one! And he flutters his wings so quickly that it looks very weird at 30 frames a second. Rip the people who play at 30 frames a second. Or watch at 30 frames a second. Uh, he sort of reminds me of a war wasp, because he keeps ducking around all the time. Um, but yeah, this is a regular old Chica. Chica? Chica. I'll say Chica. This light creature can be stunned, especially by dark energy. Oh, wow. So, the only problem is uh, dark energy is absolutely painful to hit him with. Like that. Once he's done, uh, you want to go around to his other side using your grapple beam. Hey, look at that. They finally threw that in. And use the Seeker Missile to try and get all four wings at the same time. If you do, sweet! But usually he still, you know, he takes a bit. He's got a very regular pattern, and if you, you know, if you, if you don't care, you just do this. You just, like, jump right at him and try and get him, like, bang on and don't care about the, the, uh, the grapple beam points. Uh, but do note, he is gonna, like, center on one of the platforms, so if you're trudging around in the, in the muck, you know, He's gonna wander around. I'm surprised he still has health as well, because usually you can two cycle him, but sometimes it's very temperamental and it'll take three cycles. Uh, and yeah, you can stun him as quickly as you want. I mean, you could, you could be messy like me, try and jump out. Oh my gosh. That stuff, I'm just gonna the power beam. Or even better, the super missile. Oh, never mind. He can just break your lock on and... Well, he can, anyways, but... I think regular power beam is probably alright. Thank you for your swat and fly around attack as well.
He's definitely, you know, he's a temple guardian for a reason. There we go. Oh, look at that. See, like, one tiny little bit because I think it missed earlier. <laughs> Easy. Then he falls down. You can actually start scanning him, like, immediately. Spoilers. <laughs> Uh, he turns into a dark version, and obviously the dark version is uh, got a completely different weak point, and also is weak to a completely different beam. So here he is, he reveals himself, oh, there he is, and then at some point when he turns towards you, he's ready to get hit. He immediately takes damage on his little uh, sacky belly. So I believe the, the strat is uh, also he shoots out little things. There are five things to scan in this fight, by the way. Um, the trick is, I think it's three charge shots and then like two taps. Like four taps, and then he's done. He'll be on half his health at that point, and that means take two. We are doing this, <laughs> the same fight again. Uh, these things will be great if you need a bit more ammo. Or health. Yeah, I like this fight. It's, it's pretty neat. Like. Hey, if you're going to come up with some contextual reason that I somehow have to use the Seeker Missile, you know, this is how you do it, I guess. Um, it does come out of nowhere, though. I'll tell you that. It's like, oh my gosh, okay. There you go. I think he's turning he's it that way. So, bounce on over. Is he sinking the platform on me? How dare you. I hope that hit. So he does this like dash back and forth. There you go. Just, just get him clean with it. And now he turned around. There you go. Lock, 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 lock. Are we good? Do we get. Nope. He's still. He's still going. I think if you're doing this fight and you need to do it in the speedrun time, you just have to like somehow get him with a two cycle on either half. You don't need it for both halves. And you need to be able to take him out, like or stun him real quick. Just you're coming in with six energy tanks, you can you can wing it. Also, just as a note, you can't oh my gosh. You can hold Y and uh, walk around. Oh, hi. Hi, I hadn't uh, hit you because you were blocking my way. Thanks, bro. That's fun. Oh my gosh, he's still doing it, but that one's partially on me as well because I'm like going so aggressive on this fight. I, you would imagine him going into the lava, the lava, the, the grape juice, would uh, make him tougher. But he seems to be incredibly weak because his weak point is boldness. Very boldness. Again, just three charges, and then, uh, and then he ducked off. Come on, come on. There you go. Easy, easy fight. At least easy for six energy tanks. I'd probably say on a first playthrough, if you haven't picked up a ton of energy tanks, I could imagine this to be a bit tricky. But they give you plenty of opportunities to just sit still and regain your ammo. So. And this has granted us uh, something you may have been wondering. <laughs> it's like, are we going to get around to this? Uh, there's visors in this game. Um, this is actually, I have 25, like, steps on my, like, path. This is step 14. Like, we're definitely, I'd say, halfway through the through the game at this point. And only now do you get the first visor. Take a shot, by the way. We've already had a few dark variants. Greetings, blub. Is it, is it like just, oh, sleeping in is fine, or the weather's cold, or uh, sick, or work? Or there's a lot of reasons, I guess. Uh, we just got the Dark Visor. So take a shot, the drinking game has already started. Uh, the Dark Visor lets you see things that you couldn't see before. Weather and can sleep in. Sleeping in is always good. I've actually been sleeping in quite a fair bit uh, in the mornings, because it is warmer in my room now at 9.44pm than it is when I wake up. Because, and, and it's it's very warm in the midday, we're getting some like real like 30 degree weather going on, and my room is east facing, so I get all the morning like sun. 
and then it's just stinking hot. It's absolutely stinking hot. I need like a like proper ventilation <laughs> or anything. Um, yeah, no, nah, I just got the the dark visor, so now I can see things that uh, you may, you may be wondering. It's like, well, uh, the effect is all right. I like the the shape of the visor, but honestly, I don't think it's as impressive as infrared or X-ray. They just seem a bit more tangible to me. This just seems like black and white filter with red objects. And then things just suddenly appear. Which, yeah, I don't know, it doesn't it doesn't scream out to me as as interesting. But uh but yeah, no, this is um I mean this is us taking the energy. We are done with the uh with the Torvis bog. And uh we're ready to do the do the wander back with literally nothing on the way. Is there a tell for when there might be something hidden? Uh, you will find things. Uh, you missed. Uh, we fought a bi a giant. There's the whole under underwater part to the uh the light. Ver oh, actually, it's in both versions. There's this whole underwater sewer section that we've done, um, and it involved two bosses. One gave the gravity boost, which is basically like the gravity suit, and uh, the other one is the grapple beam. And then I wandered up here and got this. So, and we got the seeker missile as well. Um, by wandering back to the start area. I keep doing... Oh, I keep, this is a terrible trend. I've been doing hand gestures on stream. I gotta stop doing it because no one sees any of it. <laughs> Even if I did, like, VTubing, it's like, I don't know if I'd do one with, like, hand... I, don't, I wouldn't really do a VTuber. I I like just being expressive in my voice and that's it. Um, it's very old school because I feel like there's lots of people who are like, yeah, like, you know, VTubing. Not necessarily the future, but you know what I mean, where it's like people do VTubing now when they typically, or when they traditionally didn't. I don't have a camera, and that one's just purely because of, like, me. Like, like I can afford it. I can I can buy myself a camera. But I don't really have, like, a huge desire to. I'm just like, hey, you know, if I make noise, people will know I'm here. And I just, just be expressive in my voice, and I'll be good. It's come up a few times, like I've mentally gone, oh, you know, should I, but I stopped at this. We're going old school. Because also, if you do VTubing, then, I don't know, like, there's sort of a, 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 like, this is not, this is not even a dig as well, this is more just a, like, I just want to, like, play some games and do commentary. Uh, I don't really have a huge intention for branding or other kinds of things, I'm just like, ah, oh, just do me, do, do, do my, do my stuff. But, uh, yeah, no, it's curious seeing, like, people that you've, you've known in the past, and then they do VTubing. Like, they do, they just jump into VTubing. Sometimes they've already revealed themselves, and they're already, like, flesh tubers. Like, in the sense of, like, they've already just actually done... Tubers has always been the, like, term now for everyone. Um, with the grapple beam, boy, uh, not this one. <laughs> it's the other one's side. Um, you could probably have gotten this, uh, missile before. On a bait. There we go. There's a missile here that uh, you'll need the grapple beam to get, but we've already... Oh. We've already been in this room the other way, I just sort of walked past it. It just feels a bit better to get it now, and I wasn't really scrimping on, uh, on um, missiles before. So, oh, I've jumped straight past it. There we go. Uh, probably Light World. Probably Light World. Because this is our wandering to the temple, and we've been to the temple before. Oh, I'm just like, oh yeah, look at the dark room around. So now with, so the doors are locked, but now with the dark visor, you can see these guys just meander around a bit. And you can continue locking onto them. That's what it's for. These guys in particular. Uh, I've got no ammo, so, uh, <laughs> please excuse me, Mr. Man. I had the grabby tongue, yeah, the grabby tongue enemy, yeah. Oh, he's chilling up there. Whoops. Yeah, it's almost like the X-ray visor. Like, it feels like it, but visually it doesn't quite scream out as, you know, iconic in my eyes. It's just like, like, you see what I mean? Or it's like, uh, it's basically just grayscale world with red objects and a very, like, nifty looking, like, shape of the visor. 
Um, it, e it doesn't even like do the, like, you, you know how when you had the thermal visor or the x-ray visor and suddenly you had like a triangular or a circular shaped HUD? This doesn't change that. The x-ray visor but cooler. Yeah, the dark visor. Oh, he's taunting me. Oh, and he's gone. He's gone. They're just annoying that they're like, chilling there. Uh, it doesn't matter if you take the high road or the low road because there's a lift anyways at the end. Oh, but it, the low road does count if you want to avoid ever opening this super missile door. I don't think it really matters. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. Also, you missed my rant earlier about how, uh, the Australian government has casually made 500, well, in combination with the telcos, has made 500,000 phones, uh, that previously worked, uh, just not work, because they turned off 3G, but they also forgot to tell people that it's not just you need a phone that connects to 4G, is that you need a phone that can do phone calls over voice over LTE, which is not necessarily all of them. Also, they sometimes, for some carriers, uh, they manage a whitelist, so some devices just don't work at all. Uh, and uh, bonus points, you can literally be roaming and you can switch between networks and your coverage will literally die because that that network has said your phone doesn't work apparently. It's it's a it's a mess of a system, so <laughs> I won't reiterate, but it's uh it's yeah, it's a doozy. There's a there's a great article on Hacker News right now, um, but you could probably find a, a YouTube video that's probably gonna go quite popular. Um, that explains it quite nicely. Um, but yeah, uh, the government sort of expedited pushing this. Uh, many other countries still, I think the UK is turning it off in 2030. That's six more years. Uh, and also I'm pretty sure they still allow like 3G for emergency calls. Like, I don't know why it's just every single bit of 3G is turned off. And we start by kicking devices off the network. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so with the power returned, we now have uh, yet another trek back to UMOS in 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 due time. So. Uh, with that, I think, what did I have? I had as another topic, um, uh, you remember Jason Schreier? Jason Schreier is perhaps a very large reason why I'm not a big fan of gaming journalism. He was, I believe, an editor-in-chief at Kotaku between 2010 and 2020. So, especially during that time, you know, that time. Um, he then went on to write for Bloomberg and other kinds of things, but, uh, Jason Schreier, uh, had... A, uh, a tweet basically describing, and I can pull it up right now on my end, he, uh, he made a tweet saying, uh, what, what do you say, quote, on October 31, go woke, go bro, uh, top of the charts. And uh, so obviously, you know, he's, he's poking fun at the, the phrase, go woke, go broke, um, which I think is... You know, it's trendy. It's not necessarily true. There are some things that you could identify as woke and they go, you know, they do fine. Or there's things that are, you know, aren't woke and flop anyways. Like, honestly, like, I think some people attribute, um, ouch. <laughs> some people attribute, uh, what's it, um, what's the name of the game? Uh, Concord. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Um, some people attribute that one to the, the mindset, but I don't know, I don't think they really got there yet. I think it was just a poorly mismanaged game. <laughs> um, this, uh, he then also has a screen, uh, oh, sorry, a, two screenshots of the Steam top sellers chart, which shows Dragon Age Vanguard, uh, Vanguard in the top chart, and uh, actually number one on the top chart, as well as also showing it reached a peak of around 58,000 concurrent players on its first day, and that's not necessarily the number of sales. Um, did I miss this? I think I missed this, actually. Uh, time to read out some lore. The day came when space was torn asunder, revealing dimensional rifts to a dark place. Horrible dark swarms streaked forth from these rifts, engulfing nearby creatures and transforming them into what we would come to call Darklings. The dark creatures became our enemies, and peace came to an end on Aether. 
very nicely as well. The grapple beam gets another wonderful use right here, just for one missile, but that's good fun. Because we, we explored the underside of this uh, hallway back when we couldn't do any better, but now we can. Also, uh, can't wait if you get one <laughs> one annoying uh, piece of, bit of lore. Uh, I'm going to try my best. I actually did, on my practice run, I did really well and I didn't miss anything. Actually, no. Sorry, I missed one. I Awkwardly, it was um, in this underwater section. One of the key barrel lo logs right here. Like... I got the key. I didn't need to get the, the key bearer log for. So. Also, I like how we've got the, the poison vines, but it's not an enemy this time. It's just, it, it even tells you it's venom weed. It's not an enemy. Okay, so. Anyways, with a few extra missile expansions. Also, did you notice that the seeker missile actually counted as an extra five missiles? That just casually kicked in. I, I, I thought I'd note that one because, uh, that also means, like how we end with one more missile expansion, we actually end with one more, like, 255 missiles instead of 250. Just a curious point. I think they kept that up in, um, Prime 3 as well. Uh, there is nothing until I get to UMOS, so, uh, to, to mention the, the Jason Trier thing, um, so he's pointed out that this game's doing pretty well. Uh, a, an account by the name of Mr. Clown, uh, with I think with a 10. Actually, no, that's a strikeout zero in the... Oh, how do you even type it out his name? It says, there's no way you generally, you genuinely like this turd. And he goes, I actually don't like the game very much, but I do like seeing you chuds get dunked on. Uh, hmm. Yeah, the water pirate. Yeah, we've done the underwater section already. So we're, we're done with that now. But yeah, no, I having to go back for the underwater pirate. Um... I don't remember if it was specifically the Underwater Pirate, but it was around there. Um, oh, he, he, uh, Dragon Age Vanguard. Um, and not just as a precursor, like, I honestly don't care if that game, like, does well or doesn't do well. Um, I played eight hours of Mass Effect and then I got bored and I've sort of never played a Bioware game since, but I should play MDK2 because I really want to play MDK1 on stream as, like, a one-off. Uh, sorry, yeah, Veilguard. Vanguard is uh, Call of Duty, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, whoops. I don't even remember the name of the game, I tell ya. I don't remember seeing anything. I remember seeing, like, the name drop, like, a year ago. I didn't realize it came out. Yeah, I heard it's decent, but people don't like the story. Is it garbage? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, but I think if you do enjoy it, don't let me ruin it for you. Um, because I honestly don't have an opinion on that. Uh, I actually, fun fact as well, um... Uh, my, my weekly movie night of the week, uh, we've gotten to the, uh, it's not Dragon Age. Yeah, if people don't like it because it's not Dragon Age in the same way that I don't like, uh, Metroid Prime 3 as much because I feel like a lot of the things that make Metroid, Metroid are not in that one. More on that, uh, when I get around to it. Um, also some UMOS dialogue. Look at that, two, two, ah, ah, ah. The Temple of Torvus glows with energy once more. Only one temple remains without the light of ether. You must travel to our fortress high in the cliffs. The last temple lies in the fortress. Seek knowledge there before invading the Ing Hive. Be cautious in the fortress. This place was once guarded by machines of our creation, but now they are corrupted slaves of the Ng. They will not see you as a friend. Yeah, it kind of does. Our goal draws ever closer. Let the light of Aether be your guide. I actually believe that the suits are, like, repurposed their technology, and that's probably why it does look a lot like them. And I kind of like that about every single one of these Prime games, is they have to really take, you know, the art very different. Like, there's, you know, there's a lot of similarities in quite a bunch of places, and obviously we've got hexagonal doors again, but really trying to just, you know, radically change, like, hey, you know, like, how do we structure everything? How do we lay out everything and position things, and then how do we design our objects? And they've got this lovely circular vibe with everything. There's circles everywhere in this game. You know, like, we're, like we're talking about, you know, like, like, geez, I wonder what the shape of this map is. Or, geez, I wonder what the shape of this map is. You know, like, they love their circles. Um, there is a save point here, uh, which we've experienced ages ago, but you may actually 
not realize that uh, with the Morph Ball Bomb you can open this up. And you can get yourself a lovely missile. Uh, but yeah, Jason Schreier pointing out that this game that he doesn't like is doing okay just to own the chuds is definitely um, a little unprofessional. I'm not saying that Twitter necessarily has to be a deeply professional place, but it is. You're a gaming journalist, and you do use Twitter to promote your business. Like, I feel like if you are going to do that, just saying you are owning the chuds, it's like, what does that mean? What does that mean? You know? Uh, on top of that, uh, the sales figures for the game came out. At least, you know, market analysts, it's uh, analysis. It's not necessarily like hard facts, but it's. You know, it's something we can go off. Um, and it seems that probably the game has sold about one million in its first week. Which is okay. Also, by the way, Dark Visor, Seeker Missile. Man, they're really pushing how you use these. So, uh, when I missed that scan earlier, but I just managed to sneak it in. Well, this will be the actual time I get it back. So... <laughs> Just mental note, if you were watching me and then you missed it and you couldn't figure out how to get the scan back, well, just don't miss it now. Uh, space Pirates are chilling here. I don't think we need to actually deal with them because uh, it's just through this door. I know, right? It was here the whole time. Actually, better than here the whole time. Hold on, before we leave. <laughs> I'm like mental knowing going, isn't there something in here? Yes, that's right. This is a, like... A you have the space jump boots. Oh my gosh, come on. You can do this jump onto the ship. And there's just a missile chilling out here. This is very JPEG. <laughs> when you got nothing else to put in comparison, it's now like, oh, I, I kind of see. Geronimo! <laughs> just thought that'd be fun. Uh, but yeah, now we can wander onwards. Space Pirates must hate, like, me, Samus. Or I just ignore things. Watch out, this turret hurts quite a fair bit. This is a proper, like, actually hurt you turret. Give it a bit of strafing, bit of... Bit of pow pow. Uh, there's a second one as well, so just note that as well. I think a super missile will probably clear it out quite nicely. Watch out for this yellow, it just blinds you. And some more lore for the more days. We learn that the ruler of the Ng dwelled in a place dubbed the Sky Temple by our forces. This place held the planetary energy of Dark Aether as well. It was heavily guarded, and entry was barred by a great gate requiring ten keys to unlock. These keys were hidden throughout Dark Aether by the Ng. A mission was planned, one that would find the hidden keys and recover our missing energy from the Sky Temple. Oh yeah, the, the scan percent is like, whoa. It's almost there. It's almost there. I think we started the stream at like 55%. So we'll probably get quite a bunch more scans now that we're entering a new location. You'll find, you know, new enemies and new items. But yeah, I'm definitely expecting that, like, the actual game part, there's a little bit of extra I want to show off at the end of uh, the next stream. Um, but the, probably the actual, like, game part is... Uh, Probably not going to be the full two hours, actually, so... We'll see with that. Um, <laughs> no no evidence of ink possession. They just got hurt by a mechanoid. Also, I love how they, <laughs> they made this entryway a scannable object. The statue of E. Butter, the founder of the sanctuary. He lived for nearly five center cycles and died in hand-to-hand -hand combat during the first ink attacks. Yes. Uh, but yeah, welcome to the- well, we're almost welcome to the Sanctuary. There's a lot of- also, uh, more turrets. Everyone likes more turrets. But the Sanctuary is, uh, you know, if you thought, oh, desert, swamp, oh, you know, when are we gonna move on? We finally get, like, a, a very unique-looking place, the, uh, the Tech Sanctuary. Well, Tech is, you know, I added that in. It's just a regular Sanctuary. I love how you can have little, like, computer chips running on the walls. They're your little boys, and I'm destroying every single one of them. The poor guys. Uh, also, yep, yeah, don't forget to scan your spinner if you've uh, missed that. But yeah, this place has some of the, like, absolutely, like, coolest kinds of structures. Let's have a, a, an establishing shot to show it off. 
Very nice. I just love this, like... Just kind of, like... Wait, wait, what are these? You see, like, the weird little, like... I'd call them, like, little steam risers, but they're not. They're, like, tech risers. Because they go at, like, right angles all the time. They just, they just jitter around, but they look very cool. I love the look of this whole place. And also how amazingly high off the ground you are. Somehow. Don't know how that happened. Uh, this sanctuary also, I swear, is a lot bigger on the inside than it looks on the outside. It looks like it goes up a fair bit. Um, but yeah, no, it's pretty normal. Uh, obviously as well, we've got to fight more of these dudes. Uh, here's a fun battle trick. Uh, they're gonna shoot bombs and phase on at you and wow, my eyes. But you can see they're gonna try and wander forward. These are the commandos as well, so they don't turn invisible. Bait him into the phase on. Uh, also, bait him into using your super missile and knock them off the bridge. This guy is standing dangerously close to the cliff. Oops. Oh, come on. There you go. <laughs> now we've dropped five enemies to two. And I thought, oh, six enemies to three. Oops. Hit a shield. Obviously, as well, you can do the, the whole freeze with the dark beam, and then... Oh, I guess he died. <laughs> freeze with the dark beam, and then missile. That strat still works. So, there's plenty of options. It's good fun to finally fight an enemy that's not a dark enemy and just doesn't die to the dark beam anymore. Uh, we'll be finding lots more goodies around this place as well. Uh, wander through this next hallway, because there's a significant hallway. We have, um... Octopedes. No, we still... Yeah, there's no more beam ammo. This has been the same beam ammo we got very shortly after the first... Um, the first kind of pickup. And... Like, I think it was outside the Space Pirate base. That's where the first beam pickup is. You still can't find any more. I believe... Each... Each of the, the beam pickups are in... The, uh... The... Um like each world. There's one in each world. So, uh, oh. Everyone's favorite. Just, oh, I can't continue. How come? I believe, if, actually, if you're lazy as well, you can scan this and it literally says, not, pres not present in the visible spectrum or current time space. Man, man, I wonder what's going on. Yeah, it's still just 100. That's our max right now. We'll find the next one pretty soon. Here's possibly my favorite enemy in the whole game. The Resbit. The reason why I love this guy, he's gonna, you know, he... he wanders around in his techy kind of way. He'll do this one shield. It's kind of annoying. Um, and then he'll do this one thing where you stop locking on and he'll like queue up this blue blue laser. If you get hit by it, it does this effect. <laughs> That's not the stream dying, by the way. That is what the game itself renders. You have to hit L, R, and B and it reboots Samus's computers. It is a hilarious enemy. I love it. <laughs> Uh, how do you block it? Uh, literally, wall. Wall. Just use a wall. Find anything to put you away from this guy. And then he blows up. But yeah, no. He, he is my favorite enemy in the whole game. I'm saying it right here. Right here, right now. Oh, come on, door. Uh, so, as a small disclaimer... First of all, you gotta fight another enemy before you get here. This is the Quad MB. You may notice his head is actually a different enemy. This is the Quad CM. That is because uh, the head can be destroyed and then it leaves just the bottom. But the bottom can be destroyed and it leaves just the head. He takes one singular morph ball if he does that. The head does this weird shield thing where you have to use the opposite beam just for a few shots. It doesn't matter too much. But he does require a little bit of a beam Oh, yeah. Yeah, the boot up is so good. Yeah. But yeah, no, the head's gonna be doing its own thing. Probably using the dark beam a fair bit is probably the quickest way to just take him out. And you sort of want to just deal with him as quick as you can. Um, there is a map station in this direction, but because you can see I can't translate the door, I'm actually gonna ignore that for a very long amount of time. Awkwardly, this one is not very close to the um, temple as well. The temple is not right next to us. If I had to describe the shape of the sanctuary, I'd probably describe it as a two-layer T. 
So think of think of just the letter T. Uh, we have just navigated in from the bottom of the T, and then we have two pathways that head east and west. Fortunately, you can see on the map, uh, they spell out exactly where you need to go, which is east, because you can't go west and you can't go through that translator tool. So, um, but yeah, there's lots of things to look at in this room, uh, including a, uh, a cannon. Uh, you can attempt the cannon right now, but you'll then quickly realize the cannon is not made for you. Well, it is made for you, but look, you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, these enemies are, well, sometimes they'll shoot, but usually they're so slow, you can just ignore them. Uh, anyways, uh, Jason Schreier, um, yeah, there was a market, uh, analysis that the game had sold, Dragon Age, uh, Veil Guard, not Vanguard, um, also in this room, this is cool, you can scan this and it says, oh, there's a code, Amber, Cobalt, Crimson, Emerald, man, I wonder what that code is used for. Also, these are not enemies, they're just droids, they just fly around, <laughs> despite no one looking after them, they still do okay. Uh, what was the sequence? I've completely forgotten, Amber... Cobalt, Crimson, Emerald. Alphabetical order, very nice. I don't know if that order is randomized or not. But uh, let's go. So Amber is this one. Cobalt. Here we go. Um, but the game has sold a million units. Now, to me, a million units seems pretty good. Like, it, it's pretty alright. You know, people will talk about it, whatever. Um, in terms of a... Oh, because I dropped an extra bomb here, I think it just undid it. Whoops. You don't have to wait for it to land as well in the middle. I realize, uh, Crimson is not green. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did it twice and I'm like, oh, I'm not paying attention, am I? Uh, you don't have to ever do this again, by the way. This room is set in stone forever. So. Uh, we got some very interesting things to look at over here. Like, check this out. A magnetic rail system track. But you're gonna need a spider ball in order to handle that. Uh, watch out as well. We've got another one of these enemies spotting around. If he doesn't see you, he doesn't see you. Also, I love how intricate these walls are. There are so many things that are curious in the... Oh, there's so many curious things in these walls. Wow! I wonder what you can see in there. Yeah. Wait, they called it not red as well. Uh, there's a portal here. Um, and ultimately, we're actually blocked unless we go through the portal. But, uh, yeah. Oh, we just continue on and... <laughs> Keep finding, finding the good finds. Uh, did we ever go into the Dark World first in the... I think we did in the... Torvus Bog. Yeah. Um, so anyway, make a hard right. <laughs> because there's a door here. Uh, which leads into this room. That's right, finally! There's a Dark Metroid. Take a shot, we did it! We have Dark Metroid. And he's about to duck right towards me. Also, Dark Diligence Drone. Oops. <laughs> That would be like the end of Samus. Uh, these things are just literally going to block your way unless you shoot them with a light beam. There's like two in your way for a missile expansion. They're just in the way. Just can't deal with them. I love this room though. And if anything, it's it's a great like just highlight of how, you know, the twisted world of the dark world. It's like, what is going on here? Also, everything has massive holes in it. They copied a lot of it. I forgot the floor in this room. <laughs> sure, yeah. Uh, I forgot this bridge. Ah, oh, check it out. I wonder what's here. Um, this uh, this world has ingworm caches. They're kind of neat. Also, there's actual ings. Hi there, actual ing. How you doing? This is a regular ing. We've fought tons of them. Uh, head through this door now. Um, because uh, the other side looks feasible. But, uh, just imagine that room that we had to do the bridge on. Uh, yeah, there's no bridge. So just imagine, it's- <laughs> there's no way you're going that way. If you check, you'll find no- no way forward. Head up this lift. It's a pretty tall lift. 
And uh, we come across this neat room. It's actually got these uh, little night barbs if you missed them earlier. I hate these enemies because uh, if you try to grapple onto this, you know, you're going to run into all of them. Oh my goodness. Never mind. I'd always run into them and I'd never be able to swing across unless I basically took out every single one of them. Turn around. Uh, well, I guess I probably do need to take them out because, uh, hey, I'm trying to lock on to the, <laughs> to the things, guys. I guess they're in the way. How hilariously like arbitrary. <laughs> you gotta keep doing your dark visor and seeker missiles just to activate some locks. Um, but yeah, no, this is necessary because uh, oh, actually, you can go that way. We don't have to go that way. We'll visit that room later, but not today. Not well. Yeah, actually, maybe not today. Yeah. So through the portal we go, and we have arrived at this room. Check it out, there's some destroyed ones. I'm curious, oh, the heads weren't destroyed, okay. Abandoned shop, abandoned ship rather. Uh, we have the diligence class drones, these are not the, uh, they were bombus or whatever the name was. In the previous game, the lasers look different, but otherwise they're mostly the same. And these are not triclops, they're mechlops. The mechanical ones. This is the only room they appear in as well. You remember the triclops from... From before? Yeah. Same. They're really not that bad. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Anyways, into this room, uh, we have a bunch of things going on. Like, this this room has a lot to look at. Uh, the easiest thing I'd say is start scanning that, but you don't need to go down there just yet. Um, this is a wall that will quickly get around, as well as also, what on earth is happening here? That's right, this is the main dynamo. And it's unstable. And you probably want to destroy it with kinetics. Ooh, kinetics. Um... Anyways, if we wander over to the far side, uh, we will find ourselves a door. I hate that this door is really far off, and again, there has been no map point up to this point. So, you have to kind of really call out that this, you know, map station, or sorry, this save point is a necessary one. Because there's a boss as well. You are locked into getting this boss. And it's quite a fair bit of a walk from the save point, so, mental note. Do this. If you want to as well, you can actually solve the puzzle of this room first, and then do the save point, but I'm pretty confident I can do the boss. Um, so how does this work? So we've got a, a, a bomb slot right here, um, and then uh, this happens. Your goal is to direct uh, all three reds up the top, all three greens in the middle, and all three blues down the bottom. This is rather straightforward, because all you gotta do is that, that. It's, it's fairly straightforward. This reveals another bomb target, allowing you to somewhat stabilize one of the rings. There we go. I don't know if that actually affects any of the power, but, you know, whatever. It's cool. You've now got a cool walkway. That leads you around to the other side of this place, which is very neat. I love all these just random cubes everywhere. There's something just kind of great fun about the angular nature of this design. Um, anyways, uh, you can boost ball this if you want an easy path back. And you probably will. You'll never want to <laughs> walk across that ever again. Uh, there's a door here. Um, from... actually, yeah, I, I was like, from, from mental note, do they stop you from continuing? Uh, yes, they do. They do. Also, check it out. There's a there's a grapple beam point so high up, so darn high up. Can't do anything about it. There is, I believe, a way to si to sort of zoom your way across this gap, and you won't make it. But you'll be so close to the other wall, it actually spawns you back over there, and that is a major speedrun skip if you can pull that off. Um, but really, your goal is just to go up this uh, elevator that's on the other side of this now. And, uh, we have another door here. Everyone likes more doors. And yeah, this is an interesting room. Um, because you drop down here and they lock the door and they force you to fight another one of these guys. 
Oh, he's just exposed his weak point for me. Thank you. He still dies in one hit, even if you don't have to do the, the spin thing where you boost into him. What happened to the music? We turn off the music. There you go. I believe... I believe you can activate this now, can't you? Yeah! Oh my gosh, like, look at this. Look what's going on here. And there's only four of them as well. But activate all that, and that turns on this kinetic orb cannon. So if you ever jump down here, you can jump back. No sweat. Don't worry. Uh, the problem is that immediately after this door, you can't jump back. So <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. So let this, let this happen for a bit. Yeah, you can see exactly why you can't jump back right now. Anyways, the moment you hit the ground, uh, this happens. I don't know why, I feel like there should be, like, evil music happening. Uh, these guys become dark, quad MB. Take a shot, scan their head, scan, scan, oh, the head's wriggling. Scan their head, it's dark, quad CM. That's right, double, double dip on the, the shots to send. Uh, these guys sort of feel exactly the same. Like, they even do the spinning thing and they die in one hit. Uh, the only thing I would say is, uh, sometimes when they have the shield up, they're now, oh, they're now weak to the, uh, to the other beam at the end of the day. Whoops. Come on. Oh, well. I tried. I tried. Uh, I didn't get the scan for the head or the, the body? I got both. I got both. Uh, you, yeah, you can, just for note as well, you can indeed destroy the head first, but since they are very uh, headstrong into into uh, spinning, yeah, it it, uh, it it looks the same, but yeah, trust me, it's all good. Uh, you don't actually have to fight both of these guys as well. Um, you can sort of just immediately start walking around the platforms. Uh, stuff walking the platforms the normal way, you can just look up and grab a lot of grapple points in this game. None that I think really lend towards like proper like speedrunning or sequence breaking, but definitely more that uh, I think the game designers really wanted you to use. I would like some beam- oh, never mind. <laughs> I would like some beam ammo, thank you. I'm actually curious, you I don't believe you could grab that from here. Nah. <laughs> you have to go on the high ground. Ooh, actually, maybe. Hold on. I just want to try this. No. I don't think that's any closer, so... Is this any closer? I nearly had it. I doubled, I did a double take just then. Hold on, I want to try that again. I don't know, it just saves me walking around if I can just pull this off. Okay, not, not with that effort. Not with that effort. One more go. One more go. Oops. One more go, and this time actually, like, walk off the ledge properly. Because I'm completely looking off. What made me get that last time? Was I, like, I was really close to the edge, wasn't I? I was, like, right here, jumping on the inside. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Uh, this is the, um, the temple. Don't call it the sanctuary. We're in the sanctuary. This is the sanctuary temple... Uh, find more synonyms for this. There we go. Uh, but yeah, with this whole walk, we have uh, discovered yet another energy energy controller, and another cutscene telling us exactly what happened. Hear the words of Olir, last sentinel of the fortress temple. May they serve you well. Oh, it's a fortress as well as a sanctuary and a temple. This used to be a great fortress, a safe haven for our people during the war. It also holds portals to the Inghive, the heart of their dark tribe. During the war, I built a number of mechanical sentinels to join me in battle. They were made to fight for the to fight the Ing, and fight them they did for a time. But then. 
came the divide by zero era. One by one, the Ing corrupted them. Now they attack with no mercy. Many went to Dark Aether with their Ing masters. <laughs> Let's call it the inner temple. Exactly. <laughs> Expect them when you're in the hive. The Ing like to use them as guards. The Ing will protect their home with great ferocity. In all of our battles, the hive has never fallen. Everything changed with the null point to the nation attack. Exactly. I've updated your translator module. You can access devices and doors coded with cobalt holograms. Search the arrows now open to you. <laughs> if only I could join you, redeem my fallen honor in battle. But my time has passed. Good luck, let the light of ether show you the way! There we go. That is the last translator module, by the way. Uh, it's a bit arbitrary, just like giving you it whenever you visit the temple. Um, we didn't even have a boss in front of this one this time. Uh, more lore! A massive ing attack came to the land of Agon. Soon the temple of Agon was surrounded by the horde, with no hope of salvation. Our gallant warriors there were slain, and Agon fell to the enemy. Our blood chilled when we learned that the energy within that temple was drained. The ing had found the energy transfer module, and were using it as a weapon against us. I don't think these guys, like... I don't know, you know what I mean? It's like you're a one-man army. These things die to weapons. It was more a skill issue more than anything, because they sort of had the tech. Who knows? Anyways, let's wander back out. Um, with the translator module, a singular door is available to us. The energy transfer module that for some odd reason- Oh yeah, it was completely unguarded. They had like a little tiny like ant. Like try and attack it. Uh, yeah, this is the one door. Also, before you leave here, uh, just brief sighting of uh, these mechanobites. We'll see them later, but it's just fun that they're here. Uh, don't worry about ammo for this boss fight, by the way. So, Anyways, yes, we can now open any one of these doors, so if you... Oh, the fact that also Samus can coincidentally fell back into a portal when she went into the Dark World. Uh, this is a fun little room, by the way. Actually, it's not a little room, it's like quite big on the outside of here. Also, two floors, by the way, is our T-shape. Um, but uh, yeah, no, this is a fun little room, because... Uh, you know, just jump on this little platform. Notice the, uh, it's not a, it's not a dark crystal, it's literally a scan. And then it, uh, reveals a orb cannon. Whoosh! Very fun. Always good fun, I love these things. Uh, there's actually one on the other side as well, if you care, but I don't think we will ever come back to this. I think we come back once, but we come back in this direction anyways, because you can't go back. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, check it out. It's a scan of a boss! Right now, this is the Spider Guardian. He's chilling right here. The Spider Guardian is, in my eyes, a very filter boss. This comes out of left field and really throws off new players. Your goal is the Spider Guardian can only be hurt by hitting those electrical, like, kind of walls. How does he get to the electrical wall? You have to open doorways to let him get hit by it. How do you open the doorways? Well, beat the crap out of him because he is going to just chill here. Once he shows green, he moves very slowly, and the bomb slot will activate, allowing you to wander up. Watch out, he's, he's gonna be a pain, because this force field hits kinda far. It's very annoying. And he does hit for quite a decent amount, so if you haven't been picking up your energy tanks, um, you're gonna have to be careful in this boss fight, but he never comes at you. Once you're up here, uh, red means he goes fast. He'll hit the wall, and he'll take some damage. Easy enough. Rinse and repeat. Six hits, by the way. Six different hits. This next room is a little bit more annoying because, uh, honestly, you just gotta have to just kind of wing it. It's gonna bounce up and then bounce down. You can get some freebie hits on him, but, uh... Yeah, it's very easy to swing past him, and he doesn't take damage from the boost ball itself, so you can't just snag him with that. But see if you can try and do some follow-up hits, because just because he's stunned like that doesn't actually mean he doesn't take damage. There we go. We've activated it now, so this platform reveals itself, allowing us to come up and hit that. And get out of the way. Whoops. <laughs> Once you hit that, he's gonna go very quick. 
and run into another platform, another little electric thing. Now, this boss is very neat, and I actually think that, like, I've sort of been ripping on the bosses this stream a bit, but despite being an, another item guardian boss, uh, this one is actually, like, a very inventive boss fight for Metroid standards. Like, because, think about it, there was nothing in the first game, like, barely any boss fights actually leveraged the, boost, the morph ball at all, and we've had two boss fights in this game. Um, both really try and leverage it. And it's not even the only one as well. There's still another one. I don't know why I jumped up into it, but sure. Um, I also like how this is the one time there's a zoom button. So you can see the whole field if you wanted to look at it from that angle instead of... ...close up. Oh, nice. Probably is a little easier to even, like, digest the fight if the camera's not moving. There we go. Uh, you could. The power bomb is a later item though, but if you sequence broke for it, you could. There's quite a number of bosses where that and the, um, the, uh... Three items later will, uh, hurt them. Not counting this one, but counting the one you pick up, so... I've mentioned it by name already, but uh, <laughs> whatever. Anyways, uh, we've heard him three times. Now comes the grand finale of the boss fight. I love how you get the free scan before the fight starts as well, but you can't scan him in the fight. There's nowhere to scan him. Uh, I'm literally going to take the hit and just like wander right past him, and then try and like dunk on him. There we go. There's one thing he's not really any harder in. Uh, oops. Don't trap him as well, because he's going to push the block, and then you have to reset. So you want to make sure he's wandered past the uh, the platform. He'll follow the, um, the spider tracks, so keep that in mind. Uh, and he will just casually follow it like that, and get that. Uh, if you miss a scan, good luck. No, uh, actual, actual, like, it's over, because you can't scan him the more you walk into that room. Which is a bit of a shame, so... Uh, now the way this works is that you're gonna have to scan him and then... Sorry, you're gonna have to drop the wall and then you have to quickly get around to the other side. If you're trying to do this hitless, you're going to want to, like, properly dodge him on these, like, parts that, like, go up and down. Can I actually see if I can do the high ledge for- oh, never mind. Okay. Also, if you take too long, he'll just undo it all, which is a bit annoying. So he's definitely, like, I've been a bit careless, but I really know what I'm doing, and I've lost, like, yeah, three energy tanks. It's very easy to lose a lot of them on this fight, and even though the game's been decently generous on leaving the energy tanks in ways that you can go, it's not the, you know, it's not the easiest fight. At least you're not in the, the Dark World. We've done that. We're, we're, we're done with that, so... Anyways, uh, he's touched too much electricity for his own liking, and then he falls over and dies. Revealing... How very neat. As well as a lot of health. So check it out! We've gotten ourselves the one, the only, the the one, the spider ball. Yes, <laughs> we had to fight rocks for it last time. So I love how they've shown you a door right here. Uh, they even spoil. Yes, it's a power bomb door. We don't have the power bomb. Time to wander back. Uh, and then a bunch of these little dudes spawn. But I love how, like, navigating this place with the spider ball doesn't actually feel that different because most of it is, like, just, you know, surrounded in this kind of stuff anyways. Uh, but yeah. Notice this little high ledge that, uh, you didn't wander over. There's a missile expansion here. This is actually a forced missile expansion. I'm very certain you need to pick this up in order to even leave. Um, but yeah. It throws you out, uh, into, um, this room? 
We've got a, a testament statement here. Let this be the final testament of warrior Sirich. I have no more shells for my weapons. For the enemy, I have not for the blade and fist. Let them come. They wait in the works, hissing and slithering like beasts. Let them. When my war cry comes, there will be a dread final reckoning. Come forth, hated enemy. Let there be an end. Valiant effort. Um, I like how this is actually the same room that we were in like earlier. It's technically all one big room. It's just connected by that little tiny hallway. So very fun. I like that. That's good fun. Uh, anyways, with that, uh, that's not an end stream with that, by the way. That's a, let's continue on <laughs> with that. <laughs> nearly gave people a heart attack then. Oh, jeez. Um, I'm missing a lot of ammo, I'll tell you that. So we'll get some right here. Always a good opportunity to stop off and get more ammo. Wow. They didn't give me a ton, did they? Uh... But this allows us to wander back down here, because you needed the spider ball in order to actually visit here for the first time? It's a bit curious. You see what I mean? It's like, it was a wall in the way, on the light world, but on the dark world it's just like, I just wander through. We are at the two hour mark. I will keep going though, because I want to have a bit more time just at the end of the next stream, so I'll keep going on until we get the item I was mentioning. While our forces on Dark Aether fought desperate battles against superior numbers, our best minds completed their work. The Energy Transfer Module, a device designed to recover our lost planetary energy, was ready at last. A force of our greatest warriors was assembled, each equipped with the best armor and weaponry available. We sent this brave cadre of fighters to invade the Sky Temple and seize the missing energy lying within. So, oh yeah, also... <laughs> Obviously, a spider ball path. You gotta scan it. You gotta scan it. Now, this is the coolest missile expansion we will ever get in any of these games. This whole interior sequence with the conveyor belts and activating the, the switch and all that. So, okay. Oh, we wonder through. Oh, fire. Everyone likes fire. Uh, lasers. Whoops. There's lasers in the way. Gotta bump up, be a bit careful, just so you don't tap the lasers and get knocked back a little bit. Oh, like that, because then it gets kind of annoying when you go back a bit too far. <laughs> it's a little annoying, but it's cool. It's cool, we got this. We got this. There we go. There we go. Now, <laughs> destroy this. Slam down the jellies, and we still got a little more to go. <laughs> Bound, oh. Ah, no. <laughs> That's gonna be a bit awkward. I like how the bombs move with you as well on the platform. Yep. The top one now comes down, and we can bounce out into another room, which has phase on. Just cash. You know, fun phase on. Uh, keep your R trigger held down and bounce up to this. Dude, there is like so much cool stuff in this area. I love it. It's just like a playground. The spider ball is so, so fun in this game. Even though it's exactly the same as Prime 1. It's just this tracks everywhere. Like here, for example. Make sure you're holding it or else you'll drop down and lose it. And then. This just breaks in. You could just break in. All for one missile, by the way. All of that for one missile. It's such an elaborate setup, but I love it. Yeah, I know. I know. It's so good. It's so good. You know what would be fun as well? Scanning this guy. This is an Ing Smasher. He smashes Ings. Uh, I shall ignore him for a moment. Oh yeah, some wonderful parkour. If only we had... Oh, skipping cutscene because I know exactly what this is. This is a portal. If only we had another way to relive that because it was really good fun. <laughs> oh, hi there. Yes. That's right. You only need the spider ball in order to access this. So, how do you do it? I think it's got the same kind of entry point. Also, hi there, guys. I'm going to sort of ignore them because once I'm in, I'm in. 
Uh, this is nowhere near as intricate though as the uh, as the missile. If you fall, you just got to come out the other side. <laughs> but yeah, no, easy easy grab. You might as well grab it now. And then yeah, just exit out <laughs> again. And uh, we literally don't have anything else to do in here because again, we still don't have the item that lets us continue on the other way. So we might as well <laughs> we might as well just walk right out. But hey, that's good fun. I love it. I think the really nice thing about this area is that it's designed in a very unique manner. Even Torvis Bog. A lot of this game's design feels a lot more, um, I guess, just, just playful. It's got a lot of, like, intricate mechanical structures and other kinds of things going on that sort of existed in the first game, but felt a little, you know, here and there. A bit all over the place. Uh, we also don't have to walk around this place. We can just walk right through it. All these little bombos everywhere, but yeah, again, we don't have to do anything here. And I love how, yeah, the poor ring smasher, we, we'll deal with them at some point because they are forced in some rooms, but not this room. Uh, this is, yeah, I might as well just take these guys out. These guys are going to be a pain otherwise. You can obviously see where we're going to need to go, so let's, uh, eh. How dare you. There we go, let's get, get these guys out of the way, because they are going to be a bit of a pain. Yeah, yeah, at least not that Ink Smasher. I don't think we'll ever fight that Ink Smasher. Uh, we could get the map. But I'm going to ignore that room, because... Uh, we need to go into it later anyways. So uh, head over here and now hold down your spider ball. This is a spider ball track. How fun is that? And I love these things. They've got little icons telling you exactly where you need to like bounce off. Um, they actually haven't quite like taught you this mechanic, but unlike the first game, you can use the boost ball to boost off a track and onto another one. And it's such a cool mechanic. I love it. Other than the camera sometimes goes a bit wild. Anyway, there's an energy tank here as well. It's it's actually just chilling here. It's not even like required to to be here. You know what that means? Backtracking. That's right. The next item is obviously the power bomb, right? We've experienced a bunch of power bomb doors. It's not here. It's just not it's not in this world. It's all the way back in the Torvis Bog, and this is point number two of obnoxious backtracking. I hate it. But at least we do get another little corridor where, uh, obviously Dark Samus is about to show up. Oh, hi Dark Samus, how are you doing? I'm a big fan. Are you left-handed? Can you even write anything? Uh, did you like this cool bridge? Because, uh, uh it's gone. It's gone now. <laughs> yeah, okay. But you know what they say, uh, tough times create, uh, intricate solutions. So, uh, recognize this little spider ball over here, and this will lead us to salvation. Because there was a spider ball track over the whole bridge this whole time, and conveniently, destroying it didn't do anything about that. And you can do these fun little boosts, which is great fun. Oh, it's just such a great feeling. It's so fun. Anyway, yes, that's how we leave. That's how we get out of here. Just love the techie music. It doesn't feel too out of place as well. Or really any out of place. I like it. Yeah, somehow uh, we go up, by the way. The sanctuary is down, but we now go up and we're at Temple Grounds. This is the one elevator that doesn't even have a cliff next to it, so I don't know, you can't even like overlook it. And that, <laughs> that's where we were, so. 
Come on, turret, get out of here. Don't need you. Um, I keep getting distracted in finishing the, the, the story about Jason Schreier and stuff. Uh, moral is, uh, people realize that the sales aren't particularly profitable. Obviously, games cost like $200 million to make these days. Who knows about advertising and all the other stuff, so... Um, most likely, 1 million sales total isn't particularly amazing. Also, uh, the game, even though it was bestseller on Steam for a little bit, uh, it's dropped off, um, particularly to Call of Duty Black Ops 6, but also to Cyberpunk and uh, uh, Baldur's Gate 3, which I think, I don't know why I need to take the cannon, you can literally just jump up this ledge. Yeah, this is a very kind of obnoxious bit of backtracking, because I think this is the fastest way to get back. In fact, I think it's the only way, because I think you need the power bomb in order to cut across going into the temple. As I'm waving my hands again doing this. Um, I, I, well, easy easy way to explain it. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, power bomb door. Obviously, this connects to this side, but you need the power bomb. And obviously, in here, uh, well, we have a gap on the upper level. And a power bomb door on the bottom level. <laughs> Guess what we're grabbing next? But yeah, like if only there was like something that you could actually like use the the. Um... I mean, even the grapple beam. You think it would come up at some point, or the translator module? But it is like a bit of a just a trek back. Dragon Age Inquisition. And like yeah, yeah, exactly. Like. It feels like there were more copies. Um, obviously it's only been a week, like, you know, sales will happen over time. Um, but Inquisition did sell, like, hotcakes. And even, I'd say, the original and two, I felt, like, I knew of. They were, I felt they were decently famous. This isn't quite popping off. And given that maybe some people, yeah, the Dragon Age IP, they were aiming for two. And two doesn't feel that high, like, given the budget. Because I, I, I always eternally note that Tomb Raider 2013 was a flop according to Square Enix, because they wanted to sell 6 million units in the first month, and they sold 4.3. And it's like, 4.3 million units is a really good number, but because 6 was there, like, we need to break even. I hate these guys, like, constantly teleporting in front of you, by the way. It's very annoying. Uh, and we don't have to do anything in this uh, place. It's purely just a, a walkthrough. Yeah, like, to me, 1 million, mm, could be higher. Uh, dropping off especially to... Granted, Cyberpunk and Baldur's Gate 3 were on sale, so that's not a full price, like, apples to apples, but... Still, it's like, hey, yeah, if you haven't bought Cyberpunk or Baldur's Gate, people love those games. I haven't played them. I would, I would probably say play, um... Uh, what's one that I have played? Chrono Cross? <laughs> It's a very different kind of game, though. Um, there's X. There you go. There's lots of there's lots of games you can get. Or alternatively, uh, the Mass Effect trilogy. If you haven't played that, that goes for decently cheap. Except they released a new Mass Effect trilogy that you can't buy the old. Actually, maybe you can still buy the old one. I don't know. Find it on a third-party key site because I'm pretty sure it was part of a humble monthly, and it's been very cheap. Again, this is a very, very long backtrack. There is nothing to do with this whole backtrack. Because we've been through here. We've seen everything. But we have to get to the uh, to the Under Temple. We have to go this whole way. Just, oh, come on. Come on. If only there was any other way to get into this door as well. I'm actually curious if the dark thing, like, can freeze him. Oh, snap! Never mind. Dark Commando? More like Dead Commando. What, what kind of aim was that, Samus? We've done it. We've do -do 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 -do. But yeah, so... In, a, in light of that information, uh, Jason Trier deleted both the tweets. He stopped dunking on the chuds. Because I guess the chuds dunked on him after complaining that the game wasn't doing well. I feel like as a video game journalist, it should probably be quite clear that that is either happening or not. It can definitely look okay on maybe day one, but ultimately, Steam sales do not paint the full picture, and Steam sales generally... 
Well, no, yeah, they just, they never paint the full picture. They're pretty reliable in terms of like, yeah, no, people are buying it. I don't see anything end up on that list that isn't popular. Um, but yeah. Uh, so, okay, what do we do? We save the game here. This is not a, we're not ending the stream here. Don't worry. Yeah. We are saving the game here. And then, uh, we need to go get the next item. This is probably the most obnoxious backtrack of them all. Because, again, I haven't seen anything since Dark Samus. We, we, we haven't scanned or done anything. We are dropping all the way down to where we fought the Alpha Blog and got the gravity boost. Uh, fortunately, we have these spawning enemies. They literally spawn right there on that point. That's right, you're gonna need to stock up on your ammo. Cough, cough. Again. Alright, head in through this door. Uh, we now got little... Little bloglings. So, no sweat. Uh, there was a spiderable path this whole time here. And e even though you can fly... Just can't reach. It's just a little bit too high. So you need to bring the spider ball all the way back here just to end up into this portal. Yeah, it's it's such a trog to get a trog, tredge, treg, trek. Lots of words. Oh you know it's good when it takes its time to load in. Anyways, drop down in the middle, walk into the room, and, uh... Oh, this is a curious looking lad. This is our dude who, like, claws you. And he's, uh, casually... chilling next to a lot of spider ball parts. Now, I, for one, again, I love the idea of the boss. This is the Power Bomb Guardian. He's chilling, he's right here. Uh, how this works, you have one path, it goes up. You then need to somehow navigate around the room and not get killed by the power bombs. That is the only way up, so don't get hit. Take your time, you should be able to hit him in all four spots. Uh, sometimes you're lucky and you can actually re-grab onto the ledge, but usually it chucks you off. It's a very just straightforward fight, actually. There's not really any mystery or secret about it. Oh. We're good. Oh, that, oh, we're good, no, oh, we're good. Ah, oh, come on, come on. Hi, I would like to, ah. Uh. <laughs> it is a bit of an annoying fight though, but fortunately you do have a much closer save point compared to many other fights. There you go, I baited him. Ah. Uh. Fortunately as well, it really is no more effort on hard difficulty than it is on normal, so I'm just gonna hit him on all four points. Whoops. Whoops. Also him vaporizing his uh little teammates. Get in, get in. Yeah. There you go. Uh let's just keep wandering around the outside. Oh. There we go. I think if we can go left, we could probably snag the last one pretty easily. Oh, there we go. I do like how you've got a couple of options as well to deal with this fight. But you know what? It's like, hey, you know, like, other than, you know, item guardian, yet again, two bosses in a row, guys. Also, now he's mad. Now he's shooting two of them. Oh. Oh. It is a rather frustrating fight because you don't get given a lot of room to, I guess, dodge. There we go. Straight path, right? Straight path. Easy. First try. There we go. But I like the idea of a, a boss fight entirely done playing, you know, using the spider ball. And also gravity. It is where the gravity boost was. I guess gravity has to kick in. Uh, one last annoying thing about the boss fight is, uh, Technically, you're taking damage the whole time because of the dark thing, but that's okay. Um, but also, yeah, you've got to climb up one last time. 
Uh, it's just this one walkway. Yeah, I. But yeah, I like the the, the gravity. Sorry, the, the spider ball. There's a lot of pl places. Oh my gosh, I'm choking on my words. There's a lot of places that you can have the spider ball, you know, come into play. The seeker missile. We've barely been using though. <laughs> the seeker missile just does not show up. Somewhat the gravity boost as well, but I'd just attribute that to there's not much water. Like, it's purely there for items, so... Uh, anyways, yes! The power bomb, Everyone's favorite item. Uh, I have not played Darksiders, but I know I should. I hear lots of good things about it. Uh, the power bomb is kind of annoying because you only have two power bombs instead of three. And that two runs out real quick. Make sure you are, by the way, um, just immediately duck out to the light world here because you will be wasting your power bomb ammo. You'll head into the main chamber and you'll realize there's nothing to do here. <laughs> but you, you, 100%. Uh, oh, the very special, the first special item you get to use like five times. Ah, yeah, that's always a shame when it never comes back. That's one thing I love about, um, uh, there you go, power bomb ammo fairly plentiful um but uh yeah that's something i like about um uh there's this very particular game i played where it's like the the recurring items actually do get a lot of fun use i'll say hollow knight i think hollow knight does a great job of reusing old items Oops. uh that's right by the way we don't have to uh backtrack the whole way this time at, at least it's convenient, or it's inconvenient to get here, but it's fairly okay to get back. So, now we've, uh, swum up. Up to the north door again, which we always keep going through. There we go. So back in this room, uh, we have, uh, well, <laughs> turns out the evil kicks in on the little tiny blog ones. These guys become, uh, also they become grown up. They're full dark blogs. They kind of look the same, other than there's three of them. Uh, they die to light ammo fairly easily, which is actually a saving, a saving grace because, uh, oh, well, if it hits them, there's, I think they're really only faster. They don't even look that different. Oh, hi, you want to, you want to hit him right in the middle, right in the middle. Come on. Get him in the middle. There you go. Uh, like always, spider ball. Just, it was here the whole time. Did you recognize that? It was just here. <laughs> I love that. I just love how many, like, just, ah, oh, it's been everywhere. I'm not too sure what's up with this, because <laughs> it's a very small ledge you actually need to land on, but sure. Sure, whatever, whatever. It's all good. Reveal this platform, and you shall see there's a power bomb door, or more importantly, a missile expansion, because we need more missiles apparently. Very nice. Okay, wander up here, and uh, I don't know why I'm going out of this power bomb. It's interesting to have power bomb doors in this game, you know. Uh, here's a room I'm only going to experience once. It's just a neat-looking room. They even wrote dialogue on the platforms. There's a water purification system filtration model within unit as long as it's expired. <laughs> it just runs. Remember to flush. Always remember to flush. Yeah. Oh, I thought I'd highlight this room because it's pretty cool. And also, it's actually an elevator room. This leads us to the sanctuary in a path that we haven't seen before. It actually puts us at a very convenient spot because it's, uh on the other side of the power bomb doors. <laughs> so you don't actually have, you can skip one of the power bombs. Power bombs are only just inconvenient when we start off. I love this elevator, by the way. I just love like being outside here. Where did we come from? Like actually, like where, <laughs> where, where did this come from? Like, hold on, hold on, legit. Uh, it's probably from somewhere down there. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, Moral of the story with the Jason Schreier thing is, uh, let's laugh at Jason Schreier a little bit. Um, Jason, if you hear this, uh, I do mean well. Uh, legit, like, it's part of just maybe getting good a little bit. Like, just don't, like, mock people on the internet, because I know people mock you. 
but you also did silly things at Kotaku, and uh, we still remember. So, and not saying we needed an apology, we just need doing better. And for people who very, very trust uh, Jason Schreier, uh, just note that he does this. So, it's kind of annoying. Uh, the Ing turned their focus on the Torvis Bog next, sending a vast force to lay siege to the temple there. Thousands upon thousands of Ing were destroyed by our warriors, yet they kept coming until there was no Luminoth alive to offer resistance in Torvis. On that day, the energy of Torvis was taken to Dark Aether, and our hopes for survival grew dim. We got some late stage kind of Duma talk. Um, there is. Hold on, I'm gonna need to take out these guys. Oh, he's revealed. Ah. Oh, dang it. I really want to, like, shoot out his head, but he just keeps going into states of, you know, <laughs> making the body seem like the easier point to go for. Come on, stop dodging. There you go. Like, <laughs> I mean, to be fair, killing an enemy via the boost ball is, you know, a fairly easy thing. And if, hey, if anything, letting me use the boost ball in combat. And that's something we haven't done yet, so. There we go. Now, there is a rather intricate wall going on here. Actually, bonus points as well. You can scan this thing up here, and you probably want to right now, because uh, this is a loss of, oh, sorry, uh, a missable. Uh, this Caretaker class drone, a rogue maintenance drone. His rails are a boost jump. Anyways, wander up here. Uh, you gotta watch out for the rollers, but everyone likes a good spider ball path. We've already experienced like five of them already. And they're still, they still keep coming. They're like, ah, oh, you know, I just love my spider ball paths. They threw them everywhere in this game. And I don't blame them. I would do that too. I'd make the whole game spider ball at this point. Drop down and roll around. So yeah, uh, other than that, I didn't really have any other, like, big topics. There's a few weird ones, like, um, Ubisoft has released a, an NFT game, and it's not the first NFT game, but it's just of note because Ubisoft, like, it just seems a very desperate play, I guess. Um, anyways, head through this door, and, uh, oh. Actually, this, it's just an, it's just an enemy. If there's one thing that does annoy me though, is that you've only got also this is actually very bright beam again. Uh, check it out, by the way. Denzium, you know everyone's favorite material that you can break, and that is both of our power bombs gone, by the way. And that's after picking up another power bomb or two extra power bombs on the way. Actually, did we do two or one? I think we only did one. Yeah. Uh, this is one point, by the way, that I soft or hard, yeah, soft locked. I needed to turn off the game and revisit um, because uh, I got hard stuck here. There's an ink smasher here. Actually, even better, a dark ink smasher. Uh, what you need to do is completely ignore the dark ink smasher and just wander into the portal right behind him. Now, this is where I got stuck. Uh, because. I didn't know how to replenish my ammo very well, so I'd always get into the state where, oh, you know, like I might be scrimping it. Uh, the portal is gone behind you. So, okay, well, we've got a hole, we can go out the hole. Okay, uh, can't go anywhere, and, uh, portal. I had no dark beam ammo. I was stuck in this one room. And there, there are no pickups in this area. It's not even that you even had a chance to, like, get more ammo. So, if you just wandered through that dark, that first dark portal without the ammo, yeah, rip. So, uh, now from here, take the spider ball path up and around into the higher ledge where there is yet another portal. Don't worry, it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. And it reveals one last spider ball track, which you can ride around through the little corridor, drop down, and it reveals 
Check it out. Power Bomb Expansion. There are more Power Bomb Expansions in this game than the first game, so uh, we'll end up with a grand total of 10 Power Bomb spots, which is very nice. Having the extra one is also very nice right now, so. But yeah, that's a fun little room, but uh, yeah, no, don't have no ammo when you go in, <laughs> please. I should probably have said that before I started going in, but yeah. Uh, anyways, power bomb this. And uh, we're back in this room. You know, the central room. Uh, there's a few, I guess, places you can go to, but uh, I think the easiest, well, no, sorry, it's not a few places you can go to. There's a few places that look like you can go to. You can go to. <laughs> I don't know, sentence. Um, but, uh, yeah, our goal is basically to uh, tackle one of those power bomb doors that we saw earlier. There's a very, very particular one that you'll need to visit, so. Uh, but yeah, Ubisoft's NFT game, um, I forgot the name. There's a video about it. If you literally type Ubisoft NFT game, you will learn about this game. Uh, how does it work? Well, basically, it's a collect the thing game. You collect a few things, you get to use them in a 3v3 combat. You place them down at the beginning of a game against a, a, an opponent, and then you take turns doing some actions that they have. And then you win or lose. Most likely lose, because you haven't bought the NFTs yet. Uh, every free player starts off with... Actually, no. Every free player has basically some fake units, they expire after five uses. They're consumable. Uh, if you run out of them, which you will because you only have three of them after five uses, you have to uh, wait a day and then they come back. I don't know why I'm just rescanning these. It just feels nice. It's always good to make sure. I remember missing one of them on my previous go and I was like, oh, I gotta double check now. Um, so anyway, uh, it's worth hitting the save room, by the way, again, as you revisit this room. Um, because uh, your key thing to note is that there's a power bomb door north. We sort of achieved every other power bomb door, haven't we? Like, there's nothing else hidden here, so it must be that door. And you'd be right. So, but it's good to save first. Um, there's also weird, like, account restrictions like you flat out can't do things until you own so many of the nfts some of them are cheap and some of them are actually someone is trying to sell one for 311 million dollars uh every single one of these units i think that's only 75,000, which is weird that they force you to try and like get three or even five of these because it's like well if everyone has five that means there's only 15,000 players like what are you trying to do guys you just pretend that your game has this value and then you expect people to trade them and sell them for that value and then you get like the profit off like residual you know like take 10% of all the sales is that what you're expecting Ubisoft? Uh, these barrels are power bombable shoot well, blow them up and it'll reveal another another one of these and this uh, reveals yet another puzzle Hopefully I can do it pretty quickly. Uh, uh, yep. That's a bit awkward, isn't it? There we go. <laughs> I was like, the, the blue line was lit up and I actually couldn't flip the blue the, the bottom row anyways. I was like, oh, what do I do here? Anyways, another bomb slot, which means another one of these rings goes away. Very nice. This one actually puts itself at a very odd angle. Very curious angle, if you will. Um, but yeah, no, the NFT game is egregious because there's actually not much game and not much strategy. It's very luck based. And the things that were created aren't actually very meaningful. It's just a bunch of randomly generated units. The art's somewhat randomly generated, the names are randomly generated, the stats are randomly generated. What value does this actually have? I love that. That, by the way. So good. <laughs> Hopefully you've been picking up some more power bombs, because, uh, yeah, you're gonna burn through those first two real quick if you didn't get that other one. 
Oh, check out what's... Oh my gosh. Well, they, they hit the phase on. That's why. Hi there, Dark Samus. How you doing? Get the scan on her. Target is energizing herself, building internal supply of phase on energy to dangerously high levels. Dangerously high. This is just a door. But uh, Dark Samus sort of leaves the moment you... <laughs> the moment you try to walk around to the other side. She's definitely gone by then. Definitely gone. There we go, so through the door. And here we are, face to face with Dark Samus. Again! Hi Dark Samus, how are you doing? Oh! Oh! No formalities this time. It <laughs> just bumped the button. Anyways, here's a uh, Dark Samus, or as better known as Dark Samus 2. She has got items that I guess we've had more. She has boost attacks and a stealth field generator. Also, 80% of the scan. Ooh. The boost ball is annoying. I hate it. Uh, other than that, though, she's mostly the same fight. In fact, she does this thing where she, like, you know, shoots missiles and takes super missiles to the face all the time. Uh, she's got a second phase which kicks in very quickly, which is basically just wandering up to the, you know, the top of this, uh, place. And she does drop power, power bomb ammo everywhere. But it's not too bad. It's a pretty normal fight. She did, she did the evil. Also, she does this, where she turns into Dark Visor. Uh, don't hit her when she's up here, even though you can't see her. It's... The, she, she's, she's evil, and then she blinds you, somehow. Uh, oh, can you power bomb her? Let's give it a go. Watch the health. Did that go down at all? Let's do it one more time. <laughs> I saw it go down, like, a tiny amount. Uh, her boosting around the place is kind of annoying and does waste your time if you're going for the speedrun achievements, by the way. I, I prefer to just stick with the super missiles. Or the light beam. I, we haven't done the light beam in a bit, but yeah, no, the light beam's cool. Is it? Maybe? Maybe? I kind of like the super missiles, it just hits her like slams hard first. Yeah, I don't know, I like the super missiles a bit more. But she does have a lot of these like block all your all your hits kind of attacks. She's not too bad, she's not too bad though. And then her head hurts because I don't know, is it the Phazon? Is it the super missiles? One of the two. Ah, ah, my head, ah, ah. And then she also hates glass. She proceeds to break glass in every single boss fight. Don't do it! No! <laughs> what a humorous way to end this fight. I love it. Um, okay, there's one interesting thing which is... Where's the item? There's a beep, boop, beep, boop, 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 beep, beep, beep. Jump out the window and wander around this ledge around the outside. You'll notice that uh, there's a portal just here. Why not? Why not? Ha give yourself a portal. Uh, this is a real like curious portal. Ooh, what do I know? What do I know? What do I know? I don't know, actually. We'll have to find out. <laughs> We're gonna wait. Anticipate the blood response. The devs might have found it funny because the arena reminds me a bit of the city in the gas giant in Star Wars Episode Five. Probably is. So, it, 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 in fact, it probably is exactly that. So, anyways, use the spider ball, and we've now gotten up into the dark world version of this. Uh, just a heads up, spinner. As a, the spinner first. Don't don't crawl up just first. First go. Uh. I am your father. Well, I don't think Dark Samus is my father, right? 
Anyways, use this to shoot your way up here. And then, uh, very curious, uh, portal position right here. There was a portal above us the whole time. And this is the only time you actually will ever come to this room. You don't even have to backtrack here for anything. It's just a neat, like, ah, oh, you know, why not have a dark, a dark world kind of puzzle? I think they probably reference it. If you do drop, uh, you gotta awkwardly climb your way back up here again. Uh, but check it out, we got both visors in one stream. <laughs> That's fun. They're really close to each other as well, because the dark visor was the last item in the, um, in the Torvis bog. And then, really, we just got the spider ball, the power bomb, and now this, so. Uh, there's only two, but there was also only two in the first game. Now, the Echo Visor, for all the things of the Dark Visor not being cool, the Echo Visor is cool. Samus can hear things, or see hearing things. This means that mechanisms such as this floor are powered by sonic detection, sonic things. Also, yes, it's the title of the game, the Echo Visor. It was there the whole time. <laughs> Unless you're in Europe, in which case it's not the Dark Echo Visor. The Dark Visor and the Echo Visor are two separate things. Uh, the effects of sound are probably a bit lower than you'd expect. Uh, like, you're just looking for little key symbols and, you know. This isn't quite how bats hear. Like they <laughs> the pinging is cool. The pinging is cool. I also like the, you know, you shoot your, your beam and you see the little ripples everywhere. That's good fun. As well as also you can use your other beams and they do their own kind of cool little thing. Um, and uh, very cool as well. And, and this is a fun thing that is in the first game as well. All, every single enemy, including bosses that you can't re-fight, have like appearances in both in the other visors on all of these games. Um, so definitely there's a lot of cool stuff we can do with this. Um, I didn't realize how long this would actually take, so I actually think I might... Uh, also, all the doors are locked, sorry. Well, I can't call it right here, but I will head off to the save and then we'll, we'll call it a stream. Because I think the next stream is either going to be very, very short if I try to wander around to the next item again. Um, but yeah, no, you just got to watch out for uh, um, for uh, any of these, uh, I guess, sonic panels. They'll be in places, and there's some actual real neat applications of this, which I find very cool, so... Uh, but yeah, no, we'll wander around here, we'll hit the save, and we'll call that a stream. We've got both visors, we got the, uh, the gravity boost, the seeker launcher, the boost ball. We had the boost ball already, not that one. Um, actually, yes, sorry. No, we got the boost ball at the end of the last stream, that was it. Um, dark visor, spider ball, power bomb. Yeah, all good. So, everything here is just brand new from here on out, so that's very neat. Um, but yeah, lots of cool bosses, lots of stuff, so... Again, if you haven't played this game, uh, play it up to this point, or keep playing if you're enjoying it. It's very good fun. New and shiny. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but uh, hopefully, I'm, I'm expecting the next stream to be the end of it. We still have to do, like, you know, they mentioned the ten keys. We still haven't gotten any of them. There are, like, unlike the first game where you can sort of sneakily grab some of them real quickly, none of them are really available that soon in this game. Even though, technically, I think the only thing you need is the Dark Visor to grab them. But none of them are in great spots. So, uh, but yeah, we'll we'll do that. We'll get the remaining items, the whole key hunt, and we'll finish the game. And I'll show off the little cool extras. But until then, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. Uh, Prime 1 and Prime 2 really have the visors and the visual stuff with the scans, how you can scan objects. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Th this game is heavily influential for doing that, for really just like providing all that extra flavor text and all that nice fun presentation without necessarily stopping you except for the one boss that i highlighted that you had to scan <laughs> uh, if 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 you find prime trilogy for a, a low price or you find uh, a wii u with it installed uh, definitely worth giving it a go or just the gamecube and the wii game if you find them around so anyways uh, yes so thanks for watching if you enjoyed this follow on twitch if you're already following on twitch blob don't worry uh if you're not following uh, stream 8 30 p.m australian eastern daylight time every monday uh and next week we'll try and finish the game if you missed part of this the vod will be on youtube all the vods are on youtube you can see all those streams i've done for the past four years oh my gosh it's been four years also we're at 2007 subs so we're still going yes exactly exactly yeah and uh, follow me on the Fediverse, m.bandad.com, where I'll probably do more hot takes about the, uh, the telco situation. I don't actually know that much, but I'll read more about it and I'll share things there. So, anyways, 
Have fun, fellas. Peace. Oh, yes, and I have played through Prime 1. I've played through literally, like, I think we're at game number 70 on stream. There's a lot of one-off games, but, like, I've actually played through a ton of games on stream. Maybe not 70. I think it's 60, still. There's lots of stuff, so. Stay tuned there. Visit stuff, but you'll see it live here. Anyways, see ya. Have a good one. Peace.